This is Movies, a podcast about the act of cinema. And with me today is Hans, but Hans is a little preoccupied right now. He's closing his window or something or another. And the theme of tonight's show is going to be a focus on the filmmaker, the musician, Rob Zombie. But our guest is running a little bit late tonight. So we're going to be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home in the meantime. Now, Hans, you were just saying that you couldn't be caught dead in a theater seeing this movie. Yeah. I don't want that to be my return to theaters. I figured it out. Um, I think it was Venom, the last movie I saw. Well, it would have been a fitting one because Venom's kind of in this movie. Now, at the theater that I saw it at, which was not a theater, it was one, two, three movies, they cut out the post credit sequence, but that's where he appears, apparently. He's having a drink at a bar and leaves a little goo behind or something. And then that's going to stem Venom in the Tom Holland MCU universe. So, you uh, went. Would you say you asked Film. me if it was the Amazing Spider-Man Two Part Two in terms of messiness? Right? Yeah, because I feel like I, I haven't even read a review, so I, I I don't know. But it seems to be uh, that they're trying to do what they tried to do before with the Amazing Spider-Man, where they would just bring so many different characters to so many different storylines that at the end of the day you get a half story from the main character, and then it's just kind of messy because there's too many things happening it's too many different characters that you try that, that they try to make you emotional about and then at the end they give you like exciting 10 15 minutes so that you can forget about all the mess that the rest was and then you, you go home happy like that audience of ch- ch- adult children that just lost their mind that's on twitter that, 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 Is that video of everyone really just like, from spider-man that the the page that posted it is like a spider-man page like fan page so i'm assuming i don't know i would i wouldn't be surprised to be honest but i i haven't seen it so i don't know the sound if it's accurate or not uh, but it's embarrassing that's what it is <laughs> i'll tell you what it's the whole thing is a mess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense and it knows it doesn't make a whole lot of sense it's essentially just a remake of the 2018 animated film enter the spider verse right uh but that actually had some coherency to it it made sense with what it was doing and the plot wasn't so dumb. This feels like something that you would, uh, you know, just spitball between a couple of fourth grade friends in elementary school. Like, ooh, yeah, we're gonna, uh, how about this Spider-Man and this Spider-Man team up? And then this Spider-Man comes in? And then they're just going to help all the bad guys not be bad anymore. Oh, all ooh. right. That's a great idea for a movie. Let's put $200 million in it. Let's get Willem Dafoe for that. So, Wait, what do you mean to help them not be bad anymore? That's the that's the whole thing, is Peter Parker and Peter Parker and Peter Parker and Aunt May are gonna help the villains not be bad anymore. They can fix the villains. God damn it, these villains who did terrible things. What did uh, Green Goblin do? He killed somebody, right? Didn't he fuck up Aunt May's <laughs> house? He blew it up and yeah. you know threatened yeah, her or he, something, put her in the hospital. He, yeah, he fucked Abel Ferreira's girl, <laughs> girlfriend yeah. in a movie. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so Aunt May is a main character now. She helps. Well, you want to be spoiled? I don't care. She gets killed. Really. We're, not, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna do an episode on this anyway, right? Well, I'm this assuming. is this is probably the episode. This is gonna be okay. the case of it. I just did a show with Monkey Jones in Kino Corner, aka Isaac. I, Isaac. Is that his name? Isaac uh, Stein, I think his name is. I don't know. Uh, Kino Kwan. Wow. <laughs> He's, uh, they just okay. did a show with me on Spider-Man No Way Home, and we just it's crashed Oy the Bay. whole thing. <laughs> it's Oi Bay, his middle name? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, and uh, it seemed like Mumkey kind of enjoyed the movie enough but knew it was a bad movie and Kino was just whatever about the movie. He was preoccupied with some French film, I think in the theater. I don't know. And I was, I, look, my thing is I knew this was going to be what exactly what it was sold to us as. So I didn't not enjoy it. I enjoyed the whole thing, but it just feels like fan fiction. It feels uh, redundant and it also cheapens everything going on with the Tom Holland Spider-Man because think about it like this, right? This is what I said on the show. Imagine you're watching the dark Knight right? Or Batman Begins. But in order for that Christian Bale Batman to become the Batman we all know, George Clooney's Batman and Val Kilmer's Batman have to come in through an alternate timeline and say, hey, kid, 
this is we're also Batman too. And here's Jack Nicholson's flabby Joker. And he's going to kill somebody you love. And this is going to be now it's going to set the timeline in place. You have to have that component. That's what they just did with this Spider-Man movie. Yeah, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> that that <laughs> no. sounds terrible. And it then makes... you're just trying to not to make him not bad after he killed your aunt. Yes, is you that... have to fix the Joker. The Joker killed oh. his parents in that timeline, but in this timeline, obviously it was Joe Chill. But maybe we yeah. can fix the Joker. Maybe we can cure his dementia and so we won't spill spaghetti all over the Lakers court. That's gonna be that watch, that's gonna be the flash. They're going to have CGI <laughs> Jack back. It's going to be Henry Thomas from E.T. as, as the Joker. Uh, no, um, Jesus, yeah. Anyway, hey, we got Spencer hanging out in the waiting it's, room uh, here. Are you ready to talk about Rob Zombie instead? I know you're a yeah, big yeah. fan. Oh, yeah. El His Super Bisto, That was a big yeah. big favorite of yours? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Me what I too. In, in 2015. <laughs> mm-hmm. What did Paul Giamatti did a voice on that, I think. It had an all-star cast. And we got Spencer here. His audio is connecting for those who... Spencer, hey, you... Spencer, how's it there going? There we go. What up, dudes? How you Have doing? Have you seen Spider-Man yet? No, fuck no. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to see Spider-Man? I feel bad because I'm like a comic book writer, but it's... Uh, I'm, I'm like so worn out on comic book movies in general right now. But uh, this is the multiverse. You have three different Spider-Man in one movie. This is huge. Yeah. This is history. Uh, there's like the little kid in me that's excited to see like what they're going to do with all the Raimi shit, but like not enough to go out to a theater right now for anything when I'm like neck deep in work. Do you want to know? Do you want to get spoiled <laughs> a little bit? Oh yeah, man. Go, go. Why I'm not like a person with spoilers at all. Like I'm, I like to have the whole experience, even if it's a shitty movie. So it's like spoilers don't ruin shit for me. I uh, right. never really understood that. So I was just telling Hans, the whole goal of the Peter Parkers in the film is to cure the bad guys of being bad. So they're, <laughs> whatever it is, a dry, now you, they also have like, what's his name, Rise Eifen. He, he's the lizard again, even though he got cured, right? He got cured in that yeah. movie. He was set back to Oh, normal. yeah, from, uh, was that the first amazing. Yeah, yes, amazing the Spider-Man. first Amazing Spider-Man. They retconned that, so he just is a lizard again in the, in the cell. Jamie Foxx looks completely different, doesn't act a thing like the nerd uh, Jim Carrey Riddler character that he was in Amazing Spider-Man 2. James Franco. The, is he in the green and yellow suit? Yeah, uh, No, he goes full yellow. It's more like, uh, I think, what was it, Ultimate Spider-Man? Uh, or was that, was that a sounds Shocker? More like, uh, I was going to say, yeah, sounds more like Shocker. Yeah. He's in all yellow. It, the, the outfit is... I would say probably more similar to Shocker, but they did Shocker Whoa. in Spider-Man Homecoming with Bokeem Woodbine. Bokeem, yeah. What Wait, hold saying? on. So they did a they did a Stefan or Carl or Cal thing with mm. uh, with uh, Electro, <laughs> where he was a huge dork, and then all of a sudden he comes back and he's cool. Now I'm sexy that's, now. That's, yeah, that's, exactly. That's great, no, and right? he's like, I want to stay in this. Year. Look, I'm cool now. I'm I'm a hip guy. I'm more like. <laughs> Jamie they Fox like from start the gold digger setting video. that up in the second one, but they never fully like realize anything in that. Se- that was the big problem with that movie was it was just like choice moments from the comics. And then they didn't really know what to do with a villain or anything. So Jamie Foxx was like, I'm like an autistic nerd one minute. And then I'm like, cool. And there was like, wasn't there like a dubstep itsy bitsy spider? Yes, so they bring it back. The- this is oh. <laughs> that's done in this movie too. Amazing. So- the idea is, I guess, oh, if we if we help them, if we turn them into good guys, then maybe when we send them back to their timelines, now I have to tell you guys this, when they get pulled into this timeline, it is the seconds before their deaths in the films, which is how they make sense of it. Even though Willem Dafoe is 62 years old now and looks mm-hmm. 62 years old, and yeah. Alfred Molina, when they actually use him on set and don't just throw his face onto somebody else's body, is clearly fatter. Um, this is the idea. They're they're from the moment they were about to die. They are now in this universe. Now the idea is we're gonna cure them of being bad and send them back to the universe, which does not change the fact that they're about to die in their universe. <laughs> yeah. 
But <laughs> so they just they, go to heaven. The villains recognize. <laughs> oh, yes, right. So that's essentially. Yeah, and no the one in their up. universe is going to know they're good now either. So it's just like Captain America's about to punch a hole through you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Willem Dafoe's cut in half, and Alfred Molina's seven feet under the water, getting drowned by that giant energy. Bo- like, it's not oh, going to yeah, change a right. goddamn thing. Oh, my God. I heard Willem Dafoe, though, uh, like hit one of his stipulations in his contract for even doing the movie was he insisted he wanted to do as many of the stunts as he possibly could. So yes. I heard a lot of the stuff he's in, like, looks good, at least. It so does. Yeah, you can like tell. It's cohesive as a character. You can actually tell the difference. I'll say that in this movie. Uh, because he's actually wrestling with Tom Holland and trying to body slam and do all this stuff. And you can see that yeah. it's actually him and not some CG rendition of him, which you cannot say for Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx did not want to do his stunts, clearly. Uh, Probably still scarred from Miami Vice, where they were actually shooting off, like villagers were shooting bullets in the direction of the cast and crew or something. He he doesn't want to get hurt before he goes and plays Spawn in Todd McFarlane's debut movie. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about that the other night, weren't we, Hans? Yeah. We just like, yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. with the Spawn remake, reboot, seek, whatever this is supposed to be? Uh, supposedly has a script now. Uh, yeah, he's been had a script for 35 years. <laughs> well, uh, no, he opened it up to other people because he basically finally admitted that he can't do it on his own. It seems like he's going to get another director too, but I don't think, last I read, he had announced who actually wrote the script that he liked. But he said it was like a hard R and it was more of a horror movie than hard a R. superhero movie. Swan? I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah, that's not a good uh, direction to take it in. Well, I think they're trying to ditch all the like, like people seem to forget how corny the first like 30 issues were that all the like animated series was based on, the movie was based on. There's a lot of dark stuff, but there was also a ton of like schlocky, cheesy stuff that was throughout the, the early years of that book. And it's all all Todd. I think they Are should they do bringing, they should do an adaptation of that that Savage Dragon Spawn crossover. That's what they should do. Like bat, how they oh, introduce man. Ben Affleck's Batman with Batman v Superman. That's what you do. You establish Savage Dragon and Spawn, same origins, and you do it as a movie. Savage Dragon was just like Die Hard with superheroes. Yeah, that was a build up to what was it? Overlord, his his uh, villain. So much that shit's out of my head now. Like trying to forget what I grew up on. That's best left in the nineties, I think. Yeah, man. I grew up on the image muscle era, but I'm not proud of it. <laughs> you know what? What else some people would say is best left in the nineties is the career of Rob Zombie, who we're talking about tonight. Uh what, not... are you not excited about that monsters movie? I, here's the thing about that. The only thing I feel about that is good for what is his name, Jeff Daniel Phillips, for getting such a, mm-hmm. a an like a real, real role for a notable property. I, I think it's Universal owns that. Yeah, that's about it. I'm not. Is that a I'm, movie now? I thought that got like up to a series. Uh, oh. no, I, I I thought it got. So I think they were going to do a rebooted. I mean, you also got to keep in mind. Uh, whether or not there's a series in development and a movie in development doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Like the Chucky films, for example, there's a Chucky TV show and they did the oh, Child's yeah. Play remake and they did some Child's Play sequel to the original. Like You can do whatever you want these days. The rights get so divided. Uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City just came out and they're promoting a Netflix show that is completely unrelated. Yeah, has... did you see that one? I, uh, the movie or the, uh, the, the, the TV new, series? The new movie. I did see it. I went to go uh, see it in theaters a couple of days after it came out. I have to be honest, I enjoyed it. I yeah. I thought it was close enough to the original games. It's not, look, it's not good. It's not a good movie. It's not a good okay? movie. Okay, I have to preface by saying this. It's not a good movie. Have you already done a but, video or anything on it? No, Hans does not want to watch it, especially on okay. the cam. So I'm waiting for him to get an HD rip of it. Can you answer do that. one question? Is sure. Hunk in it? God, I wish, but uh, no, he's not. You get. I've been you... dicking around, joking that I was going to write a hunk movie for like years now, oh, and I was terrific. like, "Oh, just throw him in there, dude. It's so easy, and like to just do something that you don't really need to worry too much about the canon. You just sort of fill in like where the fuck was this guy the whole time, and just make like a balls to the wall action horror movie with that. 
just send him in with like a squad of other umbrella operatives and it whittles down to just him and you can throw in those little bits where you see him in the game and work it into the overall story but man one another miss another huge missed opportunity for not including him that that oh, would be man. amazing i've been thinking about that lately is is oh they could easily do something with that character uh hans do you know who hunk is no i didn't really play those games that much oh man he was uh, yeah. an extra character on the Nintendo 64 version where I think if you beat the game at a certain speed or something, you could unlock him as a like a scenario you could un- uh, play out. And uh, his name was not supposed to... I'm, I've been uh, listening to the unofficial history of Resident Evil and how they got the games off the ground at Capcom in Japan in the uh, mid-90s and how I think Sweet Home, which was a Japanese film turned game, was like a first stab at doing resident evil and then it evolved into what it is now um hunk is supposed to be named hank but in japan the u and the a are the same letter or the same sound or whatever it is and so when it got translated some dummy put hunk instead of hank and that's why his name is hunk so uh no he's not in the movie unfortunately he's not a handsome character no (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's actually John Travolta's uh, likeness on the character. They uh, should just get him to play Hunk in the movie. Why not? That is a little bit of history and actually why Hank is named Hank in the, the City of Rock comic I just finished up. Nice. Uh, it's a little, little slide at that because I'm a, I'm a big Resident Evil nerd, so I was really excited for that. But uh, They're doing a Hunk game, you know, in 2024. They were that was originally what they were doing with that multiplayer one, too. And it eventually turned into like Operation Raccoon City or something like that. Multiplayer games start getting really big and they basically just ditched the whole idea of doing a narrative game and went with that instead. And that was dog shit. It was like third person counter strike with just like zombies randomly everywhere. Hmm. Uh, so um, are, what, how, what is your vibe on the uh, Paul W.S. Anderson Resident Evil films? Because I hate almost i i kind of like the first one a little bit and then the rest i hate the first one is a good movie if you completely remove the name and the license from it Mm -hmm. if it's just like a action horror movie that movie still surprisingly holds up i think i went back like a year ago or something like that and watched it and it's still like an enjoyable watch as just a movie yeah uh after that it turns into like weird like it, it's like fan fiction between a husband and wife like that's exactly what it is and every time a new character shows up it's either like uh uh we we nailed the visuals and they're a husk of what they were in the the source material like uh the guy who played leon who i think was like norwegian or something like that could barely speak english there's a bunch of characters basically that were so bad uh doing their own voice work that they adr'd the actual uh people from the video games like uh the voice of ada wong did all the vo work over the the asian girl that played her in those movies wow uh, i had no yeah. idea and it's a white lady that does the voice of ada wong in the games who is still an asian lady uh but yeah she adr'd all of it pretty sure leon got adr'd over uh and then uh yeah leon did get adr over because matt mercer who did his voice in the games tried out to be the adr uh artist for leon in the in the movies and got turned down for not sounding enough like the voice in the games (laughs) which is like a hilarious little story that (laughs) he only explained in one tweet i think a couple years back he was like yeah he tried out for it well into fuck sorry well into him being the uh, the voice actor for Leon in the games, and uh, the studio didn't think he sounded like himself. I don't uh, think I've ever been more disappointed by a movie I rented uh, when I checked out Resident Evil Apocalypse because I saw the first movie in theaters, and I was pretty hyped on I was disappointed that they didn't use any of the characters from the games, but they have the nemesis tease at the end. You're, yeah. I think it takes place in the Spencer Mansion, right? Spencer or... is like a nod to it, and it's mentioned as the Spencer Mansion, but, but it's, it's not, not. It's not it, really. Yeah, they yeah. get the subway system in the in the basement and everything, so it's reminiscent. And they rip off Cube in the movie. That scene is still pretty cool. I, yeah. I watched it a couple oh, yeah. months ago. That that's the best part of the movie, right there. That ends up being like the through line through all the movies. That 
that tunnel actually comes back up in like four of those movies. Like I know I'm pretty sure it's the last two at least have them and it's used to kill off like multiple of the like big villain of the movies. Like I think it's the fourth one. They somehow end up back at that mansion after it's all bombed out and uh I don't know if there's like a snowplow driving by my house or something. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's like it. all You're good. Uh, okay. can't really all, hear it. It's all bombed <clears throat> out, and uh, they go back there, but that hallway is like pristine still. And uh, she kills like one of the tyrants in there, using it exactly like it is in the the first movie. And it's just like beat for beat the same scene, except someone else hacks it to stop it from killing her at the last second uh it's weird it becomes like a just like a recurring scene in at least half of the movies i think i've only um they they did there were six of those paul ws anderson films i watched the first three and that's about all they don't get get any better no i i saw i was watching the just the trailers to all of them and at one point there's like four different Mila Joviches that are in space and running up something. And it's just like, what the hell did they do with this property? They went Jason X on it? Is the <laughs> it, it, there's like the second or third one, one of them is just like her being cloned over and over again. Yes. Yeah. And they bring back Michelle Rodriguez and a couple of other dead characters. Yeah. All of a sudden everybody's getting cloned. Oh man, if you haven't, I feel like you should just watch the last one to find out the insane way they wrap it up and how it ends up having like nothing to do with the games by the end. Yeah. Like they just nail in the coffin of like, we used every visual bit from the games, but none of the soul of this. Well, just tell, I'm not going to watch the movie. So it's you, like, spoil it. It's, it was basically like a big conspiracy where uh, Umbrella was going to basically destabilize the entire world, wipe out everybody, and then they were supposed to come out of this hive, which makes no sense because the inciting incident in the first movie is that Spencer, that dick who was a scientist there, him and Mila or Alice are scientists, uh, and they don't know it, but they were like, basically, they were the two above ground posing as the family that lived in the, the Spencer mansion. And when everybody's knocked out with gas at the beginning, they lose their memory, so they don't remember. And the whole inciting incident was that that Spencer dude smashes a vial of the T virus under there because he's just like fed up and it's almost like loosely set up as if it's like a environmentalist sort of thing where he's like, you know, fuck umbrella. Uh, I'm going to burn it all down. So if it was a coordinated plan by Umbrella the whole time, it makes no sense that Spencer did like a terrorist attack on Umbrella and set it all off. It basically poses that it doesn't explain it, but maybe that Spencer guy was a clone all along too. And that was part of their plan was frame this clone while nobody knows clones exist to commit this terrorist act so it doesn't look like umbrella is responsible but in reality you know if that it were were that deeply looked into they'd be like well umbrella is responsible because they were dealing with all this crazy shit in the first place but it it turns into like a big sci-fi epic that has nothing to do with the heart of the games at all and it's all about like cloning and they just wanted a new world order where they were essentially that core group of scientists and a bunch of rich people and like another one in tokyo were going to come up out of the ground and repopulate the earth with like people descended from them after everybody turned into zombies and i think it like was eventually they're supposed to starve but they kept mutating is like the twist of all of it. But yeah, it was, it was really, really dog shit explanation. And it basically makes like every, every point of each of the installments before it, like completely invalid. It almost like redacts the entire first five movies. It's very strange. And then it may, it thinks it's being deep by like making you question if like, any of it actually happened or if it was just like a construct of one of the clones like 
in another training sim, basically. Yes, one of the clones it, had it was... autism and a snow globe. And yeah, that's snow globe. So that's say that... <laughs> uh, that's probably that's... the direction I... that the Spider-Man movies are going to go in next, is yet now we're going to have clones of Willem Dafoe and clones well, I was gonna... of Alfred Molina. <laughs> oh, fuck. I was going to ask you that, because from what you're saying, I, I, I can't think of where that franchise can go now, that, that Spider-Man one. Well, Even there's, I haven't a, there's seen a precedent, it. too. For, I mean, they're actually... Everywhere. They're setting it up with a new Spider-Verse animated film. They've got the Ben Riley Spider-Man, who I believe is a clone. So you can easily weave that in. Now, this Resident Evil series. Um, the, the new Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City uh, does a fairly decent job at weaving together the first two games and a lot of the uh, materials from the, the remakes, which I'm not all that familiar with. But the zombies look drastically different in that we pulled it up on the last stream and this is what got us clipped from youtube we can't put up the episode now because the today show flagging us uh they all look like what is it linus or pig pen carson daly's big ass head with the fucking squiggles they they their heads grow and they lose their hair wait and, i can't um, even pull up the images no you can pull up or... the image we just can't play okay. Their horrible uh, uh, mutated Peanuts music that had fucking four different tracks playing at one time, trying to tell you it's a Peanuts theme song, gaslighting you into believing that's how it's always been when it wasn't. Anyway, Spencer has no idea what we're talking about. No, not Al Roker. <laughs> Carson yeah, Daly. There, there you go. That's what the zombies look like in the new Resident Evil movie. Yeah, I remember. So, do are they all like Lisa or something? Are they having Lisa a reaction Trevor, like her? Because yeah, uh, she's in the movie. I know. Yeah, she is, and um, yeah, it, it's a it's a thing where it, also they make Raccoon City more like a small town. Uh, it feels kind of like you know what what movie it reminded me of at times is Night of the Comet, the nineteen eighties. Um, I think it's like Valley Girls Survive the Apocalypse mm -hmm. film. It kind of yeah. felt like that at times it's mixed got with kind of like a studio backlot feel to it. Yeah, a little bit. It, it feels like a oh shit. I just spilled my oh, your coffee. Oh, damn. Uh, oh. No, uh, <laughs> it feels like a decent self-contained 80s horror zombie movie, but with a 90s soundtrack. And I, I really enjoyed that. I thought the filmmaker brought uh, a, a touch of style to it and it gave it its own kind of uh, unique texture which those other movies certainly lack because they feel like just generic action films you can't yeah. tell the difference between any of those and what was the other one mila jovovich did ultraviolet or monster oh, hunter yeah. i was just about to say too yeah those movies if you look at them the majority of them feel like that's one thing the early ones have at least is the later ones you feel like they feel like covid movies like they were shot on green screen and stuff and it mm. was just like only a couple people were allowed to be there at one time like and that's what killed me with a lot of movies the last like year, year and a half. Like you can tell when like a production was dealing with this, like even the Justice League, like how we basically got the Joker sitting on a car saying weird shit uh, <laughs> in the dream sequence. Uh, I, that was that had to be because of COVID. I have to imagine there was something else happening beforehand and they were like, no, we can't get everyone together. And we hadn't shot the new stuff for that yet. Uh, but I, I didn't realize that uh, Resident Evil franchise is so successful. Oh uh, yeah, they made, made tons. A, a billion two hundred and sixty thousand dollars with the whole series, and the whole series cost three hundred thousand. Apparently, think about it though. Uh, it's like tailor made for overseas, and it made a show. Oh, like yeah. I, mm -hmm. I was working mm -hmm. in a theater when a lot of those movies came out and still have like a lot of connections at the theater I used to work at. So like anytime I want to find out the real numbers that they're hiding from people, I can just find it out from my old boss. And uh, yeah, dude, those movies made so much money overseas. And when you look at it, like what do they like over there and what do they not like? And it's like, oh, hot mm -hmm. chicks and badass looking people doing cool shit and just ridiculous over the top stuff. They love wire work. They don't give a shit about how ridiculous that stuff looks. They yeah. eat all of that schlocky campy stuff up and then like every like person of color in those movies is a caricature mm -hmm. like it's insane i think carlos is probably the most grounded like character that's like not a white guy and he's like i think like an arab actor plays him if i remember correctly that's right uh, 
yeah uh not even actually latino like he is in the games <laughs> but yeah like he's one of the only ones that's like not a cartoon character like mila is one of the only people that is a somewhat like written character and she's still like cartoonish and the consistency with that never made any sense she is like an autistic chick with superpowers and then you find out she might be a clone and then she has a bunch of clones but they don't have the superpowers but then in the final movie all the clones do have her superpowers and it just like it it never makes sense at all there's no continuity to it and they like lean into that in interviews and like laugh it up and like audiences outside of america love that for some reason it's really uh, unfortunate looking at this the... this new one uh is going to be considered a flop i think it only made 30 million dollars at the box office on a budget of 25 million now that wouldn't be necessarily uh, that's not impressive but that wouldn't be considered a flop with any other series but like what you guys were talking about just a few minutes ago uh each one of these movies had a budget of about 30 million dollars and then would make over a hundred million it would like just take over it would it would well, be gangbusters that's the... insane i haven't seen the new one but that's insane that they're spending almost the same amount of money on it and that new one looks really low budget in the it trailer. does it does yeah i i honestly like that like i'm a huge like schlock b movie guy like i like all that stuff so i was interested in hearing from you that you said it looks more like small town because the original games are basically like the the creators were really into stephen king and a lot of that kind of shit so they were trying to make it look like either like a small midwestern like that classic main street if you've ever been to a place like like falmouth in in massachusetts down in cape cod they have a main street down there that looks like straight out of fucking resident evil it's just all these like really cookie cutter shops but there's one of everything you'd think of in like a movie town setting where there's like the record store where all the cool kids hang out and then the police station is just like a little just patrol station right in the middle of the town and everybody knows everybody and it's like i like the idea that they got back to something like that because that's the biggest thing that i really hated about the the was it ws anderson once i keep wanting to say paul thomas anderson mm -hmm. uh yeah, those ones. Raccoon City doesn't feel like Raccoon City. Like you said before, Spencer Mansion is insane. It, it's like right in the middle of Raccoon City, almost like just like a like a rich lawyer's house in Boston or something. It's not really like Spencer's Mansion's like out in the middle of the fucking woods in the games. Like they had to be flown into it and they're being chased by dogs and stuff to get there. And uh, none of that's there. So even to have like that, just the atmosphere and the aesthetic of the games more so this time around, it's, that that interests me more than uh, something like the the new Spider Man right now. Yeah. I only also it, brought this up originally because like Rob Zombie was originally he was approached years ago about potentially doing a Resident Evil, uh, and I, I think oh, it was no. before oh. Anderson ever got involved in it. I think it was like right after. Uh, uh he or not he after uh romero left the project because he was supposed to re uh, originally do one in like the mid 90s did you read the script to that uh i've only ever been able to find excerpts of it i've never been able to find the actual full thing i also really haven't done much digging on it but yeah i hear it's good uh, uh it leaves out a lot because i guess he didn't play through the games but well, uh, no, I mean, for, now, granted, it's been about 20 years since I read it. I had it printed up, and uh, I read through it many times, and I thought it was essentially, it was, it was basically the first game, but it combined the characters from the first two games, and I revisited it a couple of years ago. I, I found a PDF of it somewhere, and uh, it was not very good. It was actually, it was, okay. it was, it was uh, not, obviously, look, if we're comparing it against the Paul W. S. Anderson films, no question about it. I'll go with the George Romero one. Um, but that script is probably closer to what Welcome to Raccoon City was like than anything that can be found in those movies. However, in the last 10, 15 minutes, it goes much more Paul W.S. Anderson. It gets a little wacky. They have to implement the, the Sony uh, CG monster of the week, unfortunately. And I wish they didn't yeah. do that, but it's it's quick. And it's... yeah. Was That's it like a the, super liquor, or is that thing like an actual tyrant or something? Like you no, see it's, a uh, the Birkin, of it. Birkin monster. Okay, they actually do the Birkin monster because it doesn't. It didn't really look like it in the glimpse you get in the trailer. It looks like they did like a a redesign of it or something. Mm -hmm. uh, 
yeah, I'm not man. that familiar with that that particular and then uh, creature. it's leon's in it too right they got like a spanish guy he's in got an Ar- arab carlos okay an indian leon it's indian in- leon and they make note to say yes his name is leon kennedy <laughs> oh, okay. yeah Ooh. his dad's irish yeah <laughs> yeah um i don't know uh the characters i mean the characters are pretty close to their version mostly from the game i'd say uh, except for Wesker, Wesker is actually much more likable and human in the movie, and yeah. more of like a playful jock. Jill is kind of like her character from the game, but not exactly. Um, Leon is, I would say, close enough, and then Claire and Chris Redfield are pretty spot on. Um, but is it is it bad in a like '90s uh, that type of movie from the '90s way where it's still enjoyable, or just bad the script to this new one? No, no, the the Romero, the Romero one. Yeah. Uh, it. I mean, it's tough to say with a, a horror movie script, right? Especially one from 1997 or eight. Right. But uh, from my recollection, it, I mean, the dialogue was bad. The dialogue was pretty bad. Uh, okay. I, 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 I wouldn't be able to tell you if it was like bad and not fun '90s way or not because we never got to see it executed. And I think that would probably be a lot of the determining factor to that. Yeah. I had only read bits about it and I heard that it was basically like you said, like they're essentially going into Spencer's mansion. I like, I remember hearing something where it starts out pretty kinetic and they're like already pretty much in the shit. So I assumed it started like that opening trailer uh, or the opening scene in the game where they're already getting chased by the dogs and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just assumed, you know, there is probably Spencer mansion, but I remember reading that Leon was in it and it was just taking like the hero characters kind of like he did with the commercial. He, he had directed for them over in Japan. Yeah. It was just like them running from zombies frantically. I think it was Leon and Claire. Uh, yeah, they had, I posted a bunch of uh, stills and behind the scenes footage earlier today on Instagram of Brad Renfro, the actor who unfortunately passed away from a heroin overdose in the early aughts, uh, playing Leon Kennedy. I was just like, wow, Brad Renfro looks a lot like Ston from Sewer City TV. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, I never realized that was him. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the actress might have been somebody too, but I'm not certain. I don't know. It really does look like Stan. That's yeah. fucking crazy. So anyway, so Rob Zombie was originally considered for the Resident Evil series. That probably would have wound up better, I would assume. Um, I think they just had like an insane list of like weird dudes because think about it. It was the mid nineties when horror was like, like it still wasn't respected after tons of fucking awesome eighties directors and stuff, you know, guys today that are literally blown in every horror documentary known to man. Uh, But it wasn't like that in the nineties with studios at least. And they didn't really take it seriously. Rob Zombie actually talks about that a lot uh, on that Rogan episode about doing house of a thousand corpses was like the whole time he was shocked because every experience he ever had and heard about was that they didn't take horror seriously at all. And then all of a sudden universal's calling him with almost a blank check to make a horror movie. And he wrote the script and gave it to them and they dug it. And like, he straight up said when he pitched it to them, he didn't have a script. He didn't have anything. He was just like, I got this crazy idea. And he made up the name on the spot, according to him. And they were just like, good to go. Get us that script. Do they hold on to the movie? Cause I, I remember yes. Lionsgate uh, putting it out on video, no? When does it say it came out exactly? I think that was uh, 2003. I remember that movie. Then they being... held it for a while. Okay. Uh, he started uh, those meetings, I believe, in the JRE episode. I think he said it, they uh, they started meeting in, like, 99. So when his music was, like, really, like, roaring and he did have, like, an audience, so it makes sense that they would approach him if they found out that he was trying to direct movies, uh, just leech off of his fan base. Um, but, yeah, he said the meeting started in 99, and then I think they, he said they wrapped the movie in 2000, and then it just sat on a shelf for a while, and I think it was just because of, like, the, the sort of, like, butting heads with the studio uh, heads at the time. And I think there was some, some people leaving and new people coming in and uh, they were kind of 
they inevitably did reshoots and stuff like that. But that movie is like a big fucking mess. He should just do like a documentary or something on something like that. I know a lot of his diehard fans are probably uh, way more interested in something like that at this point, because the last couple of movies have just been just on like a complete decline. Uh, um, how do you guys feel about the parallels between Kevin Smith and Rob Zombie's career? Ooh. Hmm. This, you know what? That's that's a little that's <laughs> that's a lot of them actually. Than, yeah. Uh well, I remember House of a Thousand Corpses being like a big controversial movie around the time it came out. I think there was like a, a censored version or something and then they would promote it's like uncut or whatever. I, I I don't know. I remember my cousin introducing <laughs> that to me around the same time the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake might have been released in theaters or just coming out on video or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that was 2003 as well. What What did you guys think of House of a Thousand Corpses? Hans, we'll, we'll start with you. I loved it. First time I saw it, I I, I wasn't very familiar with uh, grindhouse movies at the time. So to me, it was kind of, uh, you know, a type of movie that I haven't really seen that much at the time. So uh, I, I enjoyed the... Um, what's the fucking redneck name uh the otis chopped up otis yeah i loved otis i yeah. thought that character was amazing uh and uh yeah i think it, it was gross when it was supposed to be gross like at the right moments and and uh i don't know i i still think it might be my favorite of his uh but yeah i i, I think i would own it on, on dvd still uh from those days but i i yeah i still enjoy it I know it does probably doesn't really hold up as well as when it came out, but I don't know. It's still it feels like an like an oddity in his career, really, because everything else. I, I don't know if it's the the budgetary constraints that he had on that, but it feels like that movie has more heart than anything else he's done after that. Um, so yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of of those two first movies more than anything else he's done. What about you, Spencer? Uh, I, I I honestly would agree, at least on the those being his two best movies, that and uh, Devil's Rejects. Mm -hmm. um, I really like this one. I'm one of the few idiots that actually likes the like extended version too, that had all the like weird Doctor Satan stuff at the end. Because there's like yeah, yeah. I think that's what you're talking about is that there's a longer cut where I think this one and the first one actually had a point where they were NC-17. And uh, the MPAA was just like, you need to take out all of this stuff. And then uh, that was when I believe the reshoots happened. And uh, it might not have even gone to the MPAA. The studio might have just been like, there's no way this isn't going to get an NC-17. But I heard the, the first cut just ended like really violent and abruptly. And no one other than people close to Rob Zombie in the studio have ever seen that. Then there's the theatrical cut that we got. Uh, that most people have seen and then there was the cut that came out on dvd or whatever that was i think why it was so like obscure at the time was that was like the early like all of a sudden all these movies started having unrated editions and it was like horror movies and like mid-budget comedies all of a sudden every time they came out on dvd it was like oh we we edited back in a couple of jokes we cut out of the movie or we all those like five seconds of gore on the end of every shot that the MPA made us cut out we added back in so there is like a weirder almost more surrealist cut of the movie that's like five or ten minutes longer and most of it's at the end there uh, and it's a little bit more violent but it doesn't change things much but I love that movie for a lot of the reasons that that Hans stated it's it's really grindy and that's like what I'm all about pretty sure he shot uh that one and Devil's Rejects all on film I think he's dabbled a little bit with digital now, especially with 31. Uh, but those still look nice, really hold up. They're still really fun to watch. And one of my favorite things about the guy, which I'm always like, I'll still go see his movies, even if they're complete shit, is because he uh, he fabricates a lot of that stuff himself and builds it with like a, a very small team of people. And like most of what you're seeing on screen is like really his vision which i think is is cool as hell I'm like i'm not a, a director or a filmmaker by any means i'm more of a writer but the idea of like being able to do something like that and know like a good like 80 percent of what you're seeing on screen he had a hand in 
like the original Halloween, all those Michael Myers masks that are like on the walls and stuff in the room. Every one of those he made by hand, just like leading up to the production. Uh, just a lot of him just like being a big horror nerd. But I think the 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 House of a Thousand Corpses uh, is probably my second favorite, but it's a great movie. It's it's a lot of fun and like the the horror effects are great and it's like uh what was the budget on that one again is that like I think it was a couple million right they gave them a decent amount on it especially for the time uh, uh for House of a Thousand Corpses seven, seven, seven million million yeah. yeah it was a it was a decent amount of money so it's like what they did with it like uh it it works out and it, it it's one of the few like grindhouse movies that uh that was technically before tarantino's grindhouse too right it yes. does yeah it, it does that aesthetic without all the digital bullshit and trickery and it's like actually just a grindhouse movie from our generation which really isn't a thing anymore there's tons of people that use that as a selling point on their movies and they they aren't actually really like a grindhouse movie. There's a there's a different aesthetic to that. As soon as you're adding like lots of really big name talent into it, it kind of removes you from that altogether. Unless they're on a big decline. But yeah, that that movie's awesome, and it's a it's a, a a testament to how how fun a movie can be when you just let a director go fucking nuts, even when they don't really know exactly what they're trying to do with it. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, they did huh. not give him an increase of budget for uh, Devil's Rejects. I just looked this up. That was also $7 million. And I think it, they both performed about the same, which is making a bit more than double back. And that was seemingly enough back then to be able to give him the Halloween property, which I think just had bombed at the time with Halloween Resurrection around 2002 or so. And uh, the remake was 2006 or seven, I believe. Hans, can I think we so. take a look at that? Uh, that's the same year that Grindhouse comes out, and he does a segment in that uh, film. He does one of the fake trailers with Nicolas Cage, if I recall correctly. I think is what is it? Yeah, uh, Werewolf Women of the SS, right? Right, and that's probably the best. Actually, no, I like I like the uh, Thanksgiving trailer. Maybe Thanksgiving, <laughs> yeah, dude. That's that like the best thing Eli Roth's ever done. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the Edgar Wright one. Where is uh, it? Something about yeah, like that, that the house. Don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, 2007 is when Halloween came out. That's the movie Edgar. I was saying before this new one came out. That's the movie he should have made. Uh, if he made Don't instead of uh Last Night that's in not... Soho or whatever, I would have been oh, I still right haven't. there immediately. Uh, no, I still haven't seen that. I haven't really gotten a lot of positive i yeah, have that that's what I've, I've heard just the shrug that loris just did that's exactly yeah i have like no system. desire to see it as soon as i saw the trailer and they were like i think someone a bunch of critics were saying it's like drop dead fred if it was a horror movie which literally is daniel isn't real which is a really good indie horror movie from like a year or two ago with uh schwarzenegger's kid in it mm -hmm. way better movie same premise from what I hear. <laughs> I'm really disappointed with Edgar Wright. I think he thinks that in order to be taken more seriously or have any awards consideration or have his films be, uh, you know, raised up in, in, in current times, that he has to subdue his style because he seems to be a much more generic filmmaker now uh, in his wow. 40s or early 50s, however old he is at the moment, uh, than he was during that stretch of time that led up to baby driver a baby driver looks like he passed through a black hole man i saw a picture of him from promoting last night in soho and he's like as big as me now i was like what the fuck happened to this guy <laughs> really oh boy yeah it, it must have been like a bad picture or something but like he looks old and he got like real he's like a sausage man now hans can we take a look at this fellow <laughs> yeah like he was uh let me see if i can find the photo i was blown away man I couldn't believe it was actually him. All right, well, we got on screen photos of Edgar Wright for our our listeners who are not, he doesn't not tuning look, in. Well, he doesn't look that different. Yeah, he just looks older, I guess. Are you sure it was him, Spencer? I'm. Are you like, sure you weren't looking at a photo of Paul Schrader? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I love Paul. He included me in his top 10 lists of films this year. <laughs> I'm 10. <laughs> Spencer. Is that fucking is that the Diana movie? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, oh, that's what it is. Oh, oh God. I swear, I'll find the picture and send it to you guys later. I, w- I was shocked. It looks like me if I shaved. It's like, <laughs> God damn, dude. Maybe uh, he just does not well, he, clean up a, well when he shaves. Yeah. He's a that, little he's a little guy too. So if you know if you gain weight, you can tell more because he's it doesn't a take much, recipient. right. Yeah, you 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 start to widen rather quick if you're uh like below six foot tall. So it would it would this yeah, vanity yeah, fair him. picture of him. I don't know if I can share things with you guys. Uh there's a chat share a screen. There's a chat right oh. over here and Hans right. can pull that up. Um I I went to see a, a screen reading of space when I was living in England and he hosted it and uh, I saw him outside before the the uh, it started and I was like oh oh look it's Edgar oh he's tiny like I didn't expect him to be so little as little as he is so it's probably that you know it's a a little guy that just gained a little bit of weight and you can really tell that it makes a difference because there's not much to fill out oh yeah let's get let's get defensive of him <laughs> yes <laughs> <I'm> still <laughs> I'm still I'm fat. I'm know. allowed to fat shame him. I don't know if that sends it directly to the right picture, though. But I oh, looked up Edgar wow. Wright fat. I think like the a, key here was you it's were a supposed vanity to fair thing. Edgar Wright fat. You just Googled Edgar. Oh, oh, ooh. Yeah, that's yeah, he the needs one. that Dude, beard. And it's from Vanity Fair. I was like, that is not f- like it could just be they cropped him weird too. But he's literally it looks like Grimace painted like Edgar Wright. It's insane. <laughs> wow. Well, he is 47, right? Yeah, I didn't even realize he was that old, but he has been doing Making it. excuses for him. Just yeah. Like, you know, so man, when did you guys the guy start a break. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely somebody who needs facial hair. Because that's... I mean, there was an older photo of him that looked like he was from the late 90s, and it seemed like he didn't have much facial hair there either, and it was equally bad. Yeah. He's just one of those dudes who needs a beard. Um, what Hollywood does to a motherfucker. <laughs> uh, what, what do you guys think about the Halloween remake that Rob Zombie did? Because I have, uh, I would say, conflicted feelings about it in that I don't think it's bad as a uh, Rob Zombie movie or even necessarily as a horror movie, but as an entry in the Halloween series, which I don't have like too high of a regard to begin with, or at least with the sequels, you know, the later sequels especially. Uh, I, I don't know if it really lives up to a certain standard. Maybe we talked about this a bit on the Halloween kill show we did a couple we months a back. Little. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you, uh, Hans, have you watched it recently? Uh, yeah, I think they're fine. Uh, again, I, I think uh, what happens with this franchise that have been around for so long, uh, I feel like most people don't see all of them. And it's just because it's an icon, right? A horror icon. So they forget that most of those movies are pretty horrible. <laughs> like most of those movies are shit. So when you see this too, and, and yeah, they, they maybe don't feel like a regular Halloween movie or whatever, but I, I don't hold those franchises as such a high standard where something like that would put me off. Uh, I guess same reason why I enjoy the Busta Rhymes one, just for what it is. Uh, but uh, they're very different. Uh, they definitely are Rob Zombie movies, uh, which is not, I don't think it was a bad thing at the time. I don't know how I feel about that now, uh, but I I like them. I enjoy them. I don't, I don't know where I would put them in order in the franchise, but I don't think they would go that far down in order of quality if, if you really look at the, the franchise in full. You like the second one too? I, I honestly haven't seen that one recently. The the one I've seen recently is the first one. Uh, but I remember that it took a lot of risks and it tried to do something different than what you usually get from those movies. So I guess just for that, good. But I haven't, I, don't, I, I couldn't give you like a proper opinion for that. I heard, what are you? this is what I heard. I heard that you only like that movie because Weird Al makes an appearance in it. I don't like weird. I'm never liked weird. <laughs> Even when I was a little boy, I was like, "This Let is it corny." Be known. What the hell Did is you hear it he got known. fat? <laughs> <laughs> Hans suggested around ep- what was it, episode 104, 105 earlier this year. He said, "Well, what if we change the theme song to something from Weird Al instead of that vaporwave generic tune that you open with?" I said, "Weird Al, what is it? 1988, Hans? I'm not playing any Weird Al on this show." It's a theme song? 
I mean, you, you, you also suggested <laughs> UHF a couple of times. I, said, I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, I thought you were going to be like, what if we cover UHF? No, Hans wanted to open the show yeah. with Eat It, the uh, yeah. Beat It parody song from Michael Jackson. No, that's what he wanted. Why to didn't Why didn't Nerd is the one they like? Oh, that's right. the good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eat it, eat it is appropriate for tonight. <laughs> Edgar writes anthem. Does he just play Weird Al in the sequel, or does he play the talk show host? I can't remember. Oh no, Chris Hardwick comes in and plays the talk show host, right? Also, we f- we forgot about the fact that Chris Hardwick makes his uh, uh, debut in House of a Thousand Corpses as a little round, greasy, shiny face. Yeah, you Chris always Hardwick. forget alcoholic slug Chris Hardwick mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and Rain Wilson. It? Too. Yeah, exactly. They both gets turned into what mermaid boy or whatever something they call like them? that fish boy some uh, i don't know i remember yes yeah, yeah fish though. boy yeah two dudes yeah. who look incredibly old for the characters they're supposed to be playing in the movie but mm-hmm. somehow still pull it off like chris mm-hmm. hardwick looks older in that movie than he does now and uh, <laughs> i that i think that's a, i think another reason i like that or that first one so much too is he like really nails like the weird sort of like what I feel like everybody should be going for when they're making a movie is like that evergreen feeling of you maybe don't quite know exactly what time period you're in. You're not, re- you don't really need to explain cell phones or anything. You're just immediately thrown into that story and you, you feel like, you know, the characters and it sort of, his stuff gets away from that uh, later in his career where the characters don't really feel so fleshed out anymore. It's just like, I got that code of Rob Zombie grime on it. It's ready to go out the door. And that's what kills me is like, I enjoyed those first two so much. And then it just like, I don't know what happened. It's like he had like a traumatic brain injury or something and forgot like everything that makes his stuff interesting. And, uh, or just assumed that it was always like that visual aesthetic because he like when you, what you're asking with the the Halloween movies. He gets back to that with two. Like Hans was saying, it gets a little bit more experimental, but that one also gets way up its ass with like being art house surrealist bullshit and like it's like half good and half bad, just like the first one. Yeah, if I rem, oh god, I oh, never, fuck, or, I never, <laughs> never like to miss a chance to pull up fat Chris Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. skin. You can almost forgive the fatness if he wasn't so greasy. <laughs> God. Uh, okay, so you you think that Halloween 2, as a Rob Zombie film anyway, is superior to the first one. Now, I remember seeing Halloween 2, and then I, maybe, I feel like I checked out the director's cut or the extended cut, and it seemed dramatically different. Maybe I could be misremembering. It's been about 15 years since I've watched them, but uh, I remember it going in a very not Halloween direction and ending in a very peculiar manner where I think Laurie Strode is uh, just imagining shit in a padded cell. And I, I don't know, it does interesting things, but it doesn't feel like a Halloween movie. But as a Rob Zombie movie, I think it makes uh, some big swings and is an interesting piece of art. It's like a ghost think- movie and a slasher movie, basically. Yeah. Do you think ha- Halloween kills feel like a Halloween movie? Mm, kind of a little bit it feels more like a i think it i i would consider it um more of a david gordon green pseudo comedy Mm -hmm. in the same universe as vice principles and righteous gemstones and and everything like that but i think it has interesting ideas within it and certainly a career-making performance from anthony michael hall can we just pull up a photo (laughs) of anthony michael hall real quick Preferably cool with him photo. making like some kind of you know weird hand gesture. <laughs> also like gotten pushing fat. his feet out. Yeah. Yes. And oh god. He looks terrible bald. Um nobody nobody I mean <laughs> Who he do- looks good bald. <laughs> well, that's no very disrespectful. <laughs> Damn. What the hell? Ooh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Other oh, than man. Hans. Yeah. Well, Hans, to his defense, does not have like a perfectly round head. He's got a, kind of a sharp face. That comes oh, dude. With the bald. I was just I was just saying what he's on with me the other day. I was like, you actually pull off the bald. If I shave this head, it looks like I, I'm just like I'm potato on the back <laughs> half of me. Yeah, his head does not suit him uh, well for the bald or, or crew cut kind of look. This is rough. It gets like bigger past his ears mm. he's like baby brainiac really terrible and uh you know what 
you know, say what you want about his performance in that movie. Anthony Michael Hall makes Halloween Kills, in my opinion. And he's fully in it, man. Yeah. Like, it's a little corny, but he is 100% into it. And that's that's what I want in a slasher movie. I'm not expecting you to, like, reinvent the wheel or, like, it, I'm never expecting a slasher movie to win an Oscar. Uh, like, I'm just expecting you to know that you're in a horror movie and you're eventually probably going to die and just have fun with it and make it interesting. And he does, especially with like evil dies tonight. Like literally everyone is saying that the whole movie. And at least he <laughs> says it with some conviction. Like when he asks, you're like, Oh my God, is he blowing Coke in the bathroom in between <laughs> scenes? Like this guy's really going to kill evil tonight. Well, when was the last time he's, he starred in a movie that was released in theaters. It's probably been about 25 years, 30. No, actually, that's that might be generous. He's like the Dead Zone guy or something. He was in the USA version of the Dead Zone, yeah, which you can watch for free right now on Tubi. So You got to be getting paid uh, by these people. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a sponsor, and I just keep forgetting to ever bring them up. We have Surfshark VPN. Go to Surf... I, they gave me a script and everything, too. Fuck that. Just go to Surf... I think, I think the link is Surfshark vpn.com slash lores if you want to save like 86 percent on surf shark vpn we gotta um, get that manscape sponsorship for you boys oh r.i.p loud boys podcast which uh yeah detailed today that oh they got a, they got this sponsorship from manscape a good deal on manscaped unfortunately one of those co-hosts is wandering the streets of new york uh, babbling about Succession and Larry David and uh, Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> and Norm Macdonald faking his death. Now, I don't think I'm telling tales out of school by sharing private information that somebody took <laughs> some acid and fucking broke their brain and snapped. And it's just a crazy person now that is getting, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what do they call them? Checks? Welcome checks? Hosp hospitality checks? Uh, residual checks in the mail from Elmhurst? <laughs> mental facility i don't know i think people should go home and and relax in bed for a while and see how they feel after about a week and have some chicken soup that's what i think get off of twitter yo get off get off a yeah, couple uh... of things really get off the pills get off the <laughs> drugs alcohol uh just keep a sober brain do more of it <laughs> <laughs> Um, the last Anthony Michael Hall movie, just to bring it back to that, uh, that was released in theaters, was uh, Live by Night with Ben Affleck. No, no. I said okay. starring. Now, he has right. made appearances. He was in Foxcatcher. He was in The Dark Knight. How about oh, this one? God. This went to theaters. What is Bruce Dern doing? <laughs> That's He looks like he doesn't know he's there. <laughs> yeah. He probably, how old yeah, is he? Him and Sean Astin, almost everyone there is like not looking into a camera or anything. Wow. Well, Sean Astin, I would have. 27. I would have that you expectation guys, for, but. You guys always find some movies that make me genuinely feel like I could direct a movie. <laughs> Hold on, Hans. I just sent you in the uh, Civic TV group chat a trailer to the latest Eric Roberts film that's going to be released. Oh, yeah. Uh, theatrically, I can only assume. Uh, we just want to why don't we watch that trailer just real quick it's a short one and they have uh what's his name hector from breaking bad and fast and furious and he plays hector and everything what's his name i think his name's eric g or something noel g what the bald guy the uh the bald guy, guy with a mustache yeah he so this is mexican on everything this is a movie called soul pursuit winner best feature film lift off pinewood studios jan 2021 wait pinewood studios that's like a huge studio in England, in England. right, right. Yeah, that's where they shot that's... eyes wide shut and yeah 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 i have a feeling this is a different pinewood studio <laughs> well it says lift off i don't know what that mobile that alabama is. pinewood <laughs> studios <laughs> uh, all right let's do 1080p so that we can yeah enjoy yeah it. let's enjoy oh, it the nice way the filmmakers intend oh, yeah we can see oh, every oh, I... wrinkle in eric oh, roberts face. I, for, I, for, I forgot to share sound okay here we go here uh, we go all right oh, it's just like Streamyard. Let's take a look. I yeah. can't see a damn thing, Hans. What's Give going me one on? second. All right. I love this. All right. This trailer. is Soul Pursuit 2021, available now on Amazon.com. Eric Roberts, starring vehicle. From Larry Humphrey. Son. What the hell is going on? Your brother hit a school bus. 
Tonight, now. Is that camera sound? Was what? your brother drinking tonight, honey? Ah. You hear the sound? There's no microphone. Your brother hit a school bus. What the hell? Right now. Also, hold on. School what is this set design here? Hey, let's just let's just do a dirty blanket. <laughs> that <laughs> that <laughs> make it kind of so, <laughs> kind of look like a curtain. Candles right candles. under a hot there a nice are, curtain. <laughs> was no color correction done here either. And also, those candles are dangerously close to that curtain. That could <laughs> yeah. light up at any moment. Uh, here we go. Oscar He's, nominated. He looks like a red hot hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> If you watch enough of these Eric Roberts trailers, he wears the same suit to every single shoot. So he will ha he will bring his own wardrobe and l have the exact same tan or black or blue suit on for uh, for th for this for Heaven the movie for whatever. Heaven also, the movie. He was were... in he was in the Dark Knight too with Anthony Michael Hall just to tie it back so we're not straying too far. Anyway, let's let's give this a watch. Well, that's because good. that's because they were all shot on the same week. He just goes from <laughs> one to the other every day, so he just wears the same yeah, clothes. He Literally, sleeps in that suit. <laughs> yeah, his wife. Is that Robert? Is his wife? Yes, that's oh. his wife. Just calm down. Concentrate on the road. This fucking rocks. Get your ass there. He's a cop. Was that was that lit with the ring light? Yes. All right. That was okay, her cool. at home shooting that herself, yeah. probably, and then sending it off. We made a movie He's during COVID. What is this? Why is this in black and white now? Go. Uh, go. This is literally like they got friends to shoot scenes. <laughs> They're petting their dog. Do you guys think these are the lights? Right? <laughs> you have the <laughs> plugged in on the wall. <laughs> I bet I just go. Yeah, I just go. Well, I'm pretending they're using lights. I don't need God. This is oh. a flashback. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh no. This is also kind of grindhousey, wouldn't you say, Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is my vibe. I love like just. To a cut of Eric Roberts giggling to himself with no audio, <laughs> and then they're just like done. Un oh. So this guy, I'm assuming, is the director, right? Because there's no way someone would cast this man. Has I mean, to be. no. I mean, you think this I'm is also the I'm Larry Humphrey? I mean, I'm also fat, and I, I'm cast in the movie, so fine, but. Not the main <laughs> guy. <laughs> Jesus. This is Oh, amazing. that's a cool effect. That's a fucking Whoa. awesome effect right trippy. there. It's crazy that this guy got Eric Roberts to star in his YouTube intro. <laughs> 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 this is like B-roll for a hiking channel. This? <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking insane. <laughs> Travel what is England. What is this about, even? There's a guy that walks, and then Eric Roberts calls him angrily on the phone. It's about drama. It's about Is this intrigue. a... This is the iMovie effect, right? I believe yeah, that's like, that's, that's like the first edition of Poster Eyes in uh, Photoshop. You got, I you got Papyrus think... font. <laughs> Dude, Avatar made it cool. <laughs> I hate people to brag, but then... <laughs> I love that. Wait, Not what the fuck is that? Is that part of his <laughs> audition? What is that? <laughs> I hate people to brag, but that might have been the best work of my career. Why is that in the trailer? That... What the? That's to amazing. sell the movie. Because they knew Eric Roberts wouldn't look at the trailer and realize that they used his tryout. Can we take a look at the comments right beneath this? Because there are a number of comments on this video, even though there's no likes. Mm -hmm. Um, here we go. So all right, number. All we got yeah, Quing Zing. If you want to call, I guess two is a number. Yeah, you're right. Oh, there is a on. number. This is, <laughs> this is on 2B right now, also. I love Eric Roberts, so I'm gonna have to check this out. That woman has to have hold on, like Trisha. <laughs> Wasn't there a Trisha in the trailer for one of the actresses? Is that Wasn't that the wife? That's Eliza. I think the was it her. the girl? Yeah, that's Trisha. Yep. Yeah, pile. <laughs> that's her. Oh my god. 
<laughs> what are you, Batman? Oh, <laughs> damn, dude. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, huh? Okay, they didn't even get the rights to the... Oh, 80, 88% audience score, 50 viewers. Wow, that Tubi audience really comes... Yeah. Comes in handy when well, it comes do you to want to bet that they're all named Trisha? <laughs> <laughs> I called it. I fucking called it. See, that's him. Director, writer, producer. This guy. Jesus Christ. Dude, did he have like a picture of Noel and Eric having sex or something? Like, how do you get him in this? Uh, Eric Money. Roberts is not difficult to get. I'll tell you that right now. We almost had Eric Roberts for Mass State Lottery to play uh, a significant role. But then I was like, you know, we could probably just do the next... Sh we could do another round of shooting for a week for the amount of money it would cost to get Eric Roberts. And that's what we did instead. So, oh, my God. We have to... We got to make how, a walk. <laughs> you, know, you know how uh, uh, films sometimes put, like, awards they want on the poster? That shit is not even English. Like, do you guys see those that's letters? Sri that's Sri Lankan. Like, that's Filipino, Thai, Thai, <laughs> Thai letter. And, and they're all screened out in different ways. That's amazing. Yeah, he uh, couldn't even do this transparent. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Um, so, oh, okay, so... Uh, no, LG's just in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized he was... <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. So apparently, according to the uh, producer, Scary of 61st, uh, this guy, Adam, he did a, a film recently, or maybe it was a short film, where they just put up a casting call on Actors Access, which is kind of like backstage, but it gets more SAG-affiliated um, actors. And uh, he put out a casting call, and Eric Roberts just replied to the casting call. And then they cast Eric Roberts. It was extremely cheap to get him. I think it was... I don't want to make assumptions based on... SAG rates or ULB rates, but you can look that up, and uh, it's it's pretty inexpensive. So he's out there. He will find you if you don't find him first. Unions. He would be good Hollywood to see sucks. <laughs> see pop up in in a Rob Zombie film, don't you think? Oh yeah, dude, he'd be great. Uh, they should have strapped him to Tiny, the <laughs> the giant in the original, because he kind of looks like him, just smaller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He could have he been has, his fully formed alcoholic brother. Has so many just shitty fucking yeah. He's. I wonder if he's got like child support or something other than his alcoholism. <laughs> that uh, I mean, I'm allegedly, and by allegedly I mean I think he's an alcoholic <laughs> because of Nightwalk. Uh, because like he used to be a respected act. I'm sure that now, if he wasn't in so much shit. There would be like a legit directors that would still cast him because he's not well. He wasn't bad before. I, I can't really say that now, but well, it depends, right? Because when he actually tries, then he's very good. Yeah. Um, you can take a look at his trajectory. Like he came up in the 1980s, and he's in some great films and gives some great performances in Star 80 and Runaway Train and all these movies. And then in the 90s, uh, it kind of falls apart for him. And I think uh, maybe part of that is Julia Roberts being a big star and maybe it just being like a weird, you don't want to have your siblings also be like on an equal level to you. Because, it's, I mean, you think about back then even, Alec Baldwin's a big star, Stephen Baldwin, not so much, Daniel Baldwin, not so much, William Baldwin, not so much. There's like weird social cues as far as your stardom goes uh, prior to about 2010 or even 2000. So... There's that, and he winds up doing uh, Best of the Best, which is a fun Taekwondo movie. And after that, it's a lot of made-for-TV and direct-to-video films. Then around 2000, he starts getting to real bad movies. Christopher Nolan tries to bail him out with The Dark Knight by casting him as Sal Maroney. And a couple of months after he shoots that, he does Celebrity Rehab. He goes on there for Marijuana Addiction. After what a that. dickhead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh no. He's real? in there. He's in there with like Jeff Conaway and Tom Sizemore who are, who have like the shades <laughs> yeah. from heroin. Tom Sizemore is fucking like blasting kids on coke. <laughs> He's like I'm so, I'm addicted to weed. <laughs> <laughs> after that i think he, he he does pop up in some decent movies after that in like the 2010s but uh for the most part it's stuff like this and then there's an there's there's an instagram interview with him 
where he said, I sat down with my wife one day and we said, you know what? We're just going to work every single day for the rest of our lives. No matter what the movie is, we'll just say, yeah, if, it's, if, if we can do it, then we're going to do it. And sometimes you're disappointed with what you show up to, and other times it's a fun, creative experiment that you can do. And I was like, hmm, that's a cute little cover story, uh, but I don't buy that. I think there are some outstanding debts. There, I mean, maybe there's a mob connection here. Who knows? I can't imagine what compels a man in his mid to late 60s to work this frequently and have such a, such a thin filter for what kind of movie he'll show up to and act in. Uh, gotta... Yeah, I think I think you're full of shit when you say that he pops up in good movies in 2010 because he was in Inherent Vice. I don't know how big his role was because I still haven't there seen that. But there's that. And then there's nothing else <laughs> than them too with Randy Orton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Randy... Vampire Busters. He's in uh, something called Hard luck love where he looks like what I think he is in his That's real life. That's the best just... he's looked in a long time. And this is, this, I believe this movie got okay reviews. This is like a real movie. But yeah, everything I'm looking at over here is like. Well, hold on. I forgot the Stalked by My Doctor series, and that has a new one out this year, which is called Just What the Doctor Ordered, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Prayer never fails. That's, I just scrolled by that on my list. <laughs> I saw that on one, two, three movies as a 2021 film. They decided, dude, to... he did like a hundred movies this year. What the fuck? He will work. He will work for any amount. Okay. I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. He did like a hundred movies this year. This is insane. Some of them aren't even listed yet for the year. There's so many movies. <laughs> Wow. Uh, there's, how many Doctor movies are there? Four? There's four or five now. There's a new one that's out this year. Oh. Um, Hard Luck uh, Love Song did not get good reviews. Got this one? very middling reviews. Yeah. 62K at the box office. That's not terrible for that kind of small film. Do you think Actually, Soul Pursuit was a sequel to Soul Cage? Uh, did that come up on this list? Yeah, hang on. It's it's down here. Always. <laughs> Let me get pursuit. through 2021 or 21. Oh, All right. Man. That's what we just well, saw. We were just looking at Cage. That. Yeah, I couldn't find Soul Cage. Where is Soul Cage? Yeah, hang on. It's down here somewhere. There's a lady. What with... year is it? I don't know. I didn't bother to look. A husband uh, for Christmas. Oh, yeah. He was in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but he plays a drunk mob boss in that. So easy. Uh, Where the fuck Eternity, was Eternity, the movie. When did he become? Become like a Christian actor. Chick stick gay guys the same year as Inherent Vice. Mm -hmm. uh, he really will do anything. I'm going to have to straight up look up Soul Cage now because I can't find it on this list again. You could do a version of Civic TV that is nothing but Eric Roberts films. Will never end. Oh It'll my God. You can, you can just keep that series going forever. Yeah. <laughs> you got to write. Uh, I want to see this like poster. Eddie, what can... Like an Eddie Murphy, Nutty Professor style film, and just cast Eric Roberts as every character. Oh, look at look at his uh, his head sinking into that suit, like a puppet. This poster is awesome. <laughs> Why is there an explosion in the bottom? <laughs> These rules. I kind of want to see this one. Look at this Photoshop. Look at this! He is just shooting a gun in the air. <laughs> that hand. <laughs> no, no reaction on his face. It's blasting into the air. Next to his face, and he's shooting that helicopter over here. <laughs> he's deaf in this one. No, no one, one leaves, leaves the, the mob. mob. <laughs> oh. Can we go back to that list real quick? Yeah. Uh, scroll up. Talking. He was in reason? Pop Star? Was that the Andy Samberg Pop Star movie? Where do you see that? <laughs> Maybe. Mr. Mr. Well, it's got nine, nine. It's got a nine. I don't think so. Uh, uh, no, no, this was another mm. Pop Star movie. Uh, 90, no. what was it, 9%? Yeah, but audience, yeah. Oh, it's a 9% uh, audience score. That's atrocious. The audience is always generous on Rotten Tomatoes. Directed by Carlos Portugal, but he's so good. <laughs> Yeah. Do we are you do you Yeah. 
Yeah, he's done a East Side <laughs> Story. Ah, oh, the, from uh... 2006, another hit. Oh, oh that it's a home or a I just endorsed blindly. <laughs> it is. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah this, was not expecting that. I'm glad you were familiar with it, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite director. <laughs> God damn. Uh, this would come out to a 66% on Rotten Tomatoes. Refreshing. Yeah, we got to get him for something. We absolutely that... can get him. That's Jake That's Busey, Busey, right? Busey. Okay, this might be a banger. <laughs> <laughs> got Jake he's, Busey yeah, and Eric Roberts. Sure he's sure. Hey, 100%. That's, it's 100% yeah. reviews. Uh, Scott Weinberg from Fearnet from says, Busey. a clever indie noir. I want to do a version of Rotten Tomatoes where it just says it's a banger if Jake Busey's in it. <laughs> There's uh, like I, six I, movies I, on I, it. I, I love that all of these uh, just low budget movies, t- uh, none of the budget goes to the art that's supposed to sell your movie. What is this? That's not even Jake Busey. <laughs> yeah, you just get a naked girl on the cover. Somebody on Fiverr.com designed this for certain. Uh, Hans, go back to the Eric Roberts list real quick. This is more of an Eric Roberts retrospective tonight. Yeah. I think it started as a Resident Evil retrospective, and then we we talked about Rob Zombie a little bit. Now we're on to Eric Roberts, so it all comes full circle. A Talking Cat, I've seen that on Zach Amico's show before, uh, where he just did a voice into an iPhone record uh, app, and that's what this movie was. Uh, I thought that was Anthony Michael Hall for a second. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um, did i see an eight from hell on here oh, that's, 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 one rob, that's rob zombie's newest no no am i just oh eight part eight, eight days, days to, to hell. hell okay and then party from hell damn he did back-to-back Dude. hell movies this year oh there's not even a poster for it hell, hell. 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 well looks promising there's okay. so many movies listed on there. I don't. You don't even know if they're ever going to come out. Uh, Party from like, Hell is just a, all we have for, great. for this is a stock model <laughs> holding a red ball, a red balloon, and then this face. <laughs> That's Four a times. good. <laughs> someone picked that as the screen cap from the movie to upload to Rotten Tomatoes. And Four didn't times. realize that they that they <laughs> uploaded it four times. Yeah. <laughs> there were ten photos uploaded, and that was four of them. <laughs> and the posters are just the same, just five times too. Oh, oh heaven! This? Heaven, the movie did not perform well. Fifty-three percent on Rotten Tomatoes for audience score. Hold on, great Lego what about actually. Dust ready? nuggets oh. right under there. Is this? I don't know. This looks this? rad. Is that no, Ivan Ooze? What is that? Do you like how <laughs> Nick Moran just has a shotgun in his hand? <laughs> oh. That's not a shotgun. That's a. Why does that look like Joel Edgerton's? <laughs> Moscow International Film Festival. That's where we should send Math State Lottery. Well, that's where, I mean, Russia is really where Nightwalk performed best. That's uh, the Russian people, the German people, anyone who doesn't. Like the... I know like how to tell if, review. Oh, for, the reviews for Great Land are glowing. Ma- managing expectations is the key to watching Great Land. 6.5 out of 10. Understanding this movie blows is what will make you enjoy it. <laughs> oh. And then Heaven, uh, that also has a lot of awards, apparently, um, according to this poster. Wait, not, not that Eric one. Basically, Roberts award one. God? Let's see, it's got a Christian Family Film Festival, Hollywood Divine International Film Festival, Salty Earth, Canadian International Faith so and Family like Film full Festival. So he's blown Christian now? Eric Roberts? No, I think he just... Uh, I think for the right price. Well, yeah, I was like, should he not be getting blasted all the time? <laughs> Whatever pays, I think. Damn, uh, man. Yeah, we got to get him for something. I I would mm. love to get Eric Roberts for especially if you could get Mickey Rourke there the same day. That's a much more difficult task, unfortunately. Yeah. 
But Eric Roberts, I think if you give him the right material and he is capable of memorizing the lines, you're in good shape. You got to just find out Mickey Rourke's local haunts and take like a, a week trip out to the area and just try and catch him on a good afternoon. I know that's what gym favorite. he goes to. I, I, I've, Dude, that's your in. I, uh, he um, was going to move to New York <clears throat> City a while back and then I guess pulled the plug on that uh, for whatever reason. But there was an article out with his uh, assistant being interviewed who's like this young Russian guy, kind of looks like a Russian gay porn star, just very lanky, drugged up, thin. Uh, but also, weirdly, I think Mickey Rourke might be maybe Boyfriend. gay. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, it kind of seems like it. Kind of seems Hollywood. <laughs> he does wear a lot of bracelets, so it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> he loves those dogs a little too much, you know? Uh, it kind of seemed like that could be uh, an assistant who's there hired go, to be man. a boyfriend, you know? And he mm -hmm. detailed what he would do with Mickey every single day. Like, all right, well, we're going to go to the gym, and this is the gym, and then we go to this restaurant, and then we do this and that, and I handle this for him and send it to the agent, and she sifts through it. So Mickey Rourke is another one I tried to get from Mass State Lottery, but he is expensive. That would have been fucking, like, real expensive? Um, Out of the price range, and I gave, I started with, uh, a pretty reasonable price range to get him on set for a couple of hours. Yeah. yeah it's so, like, you're going to have to oil up your whole body and wear something tight for me. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be Mickey's new boyfriend if he's in this movie. It's spiritually <laughs> expensive. <laughs> Morally expensive. Is really the, the be thinking That's what you got to do. You just you oil yourself up with some fake tanner and you just show up at that gym. You're like, hey, are you Mickey? Uh, I'll just start doing a Russian <laughs> accent like he does in Iron Man 2. He did uh, Larry the Cable Guy's Witless Protection right before The Dark Knight. Eric Roberts did? Oh. Yeah. Wow. That at least went to theaters. So Wasn't it a hit? I thought it was a hit. I don't think like so. Money was. I think the blue collar comedy films were hits, but I don't think anything they did oh, no, uh, no. in theaters wound up being or t would translate uh, from their popularity doing stand-up and road shows. I'm going to cast him in my Rob Zombie movie. It's a biopic. The seven million Rob budget and it made four. <laughs> Eric Roberts is Rob Zombie. <laughs> Remember this poster? Uh, Where what? they just... <laughs> I didn't even they see had, Eric Roberts. They had to Photoshop him in oh, with black people. <laughs> He's done a few of these. I I sent you guys. I well, I, I sent the uh, Civic TV group chat a while back. A very similar poster where it's a bunch of like uh, aspiring rap artists or something of a certain uh, color. And then Eric Roberts is just in the background of it, completely out of place. Oh, he was in Human Centipede. I just too. realized that movie Three. was called Mall Dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's Human Centipede 3. It's the, what? I don't even know which one is that. That's not the black and white one, right? He was in no, LA was the Slasher second. as well. That's a, I believe, an Andy Dick Slasher movie that which was one? really bad. LA Slasher. LA it's Slasher. like two above that. Pretty sure it's an Andy Dick slasher movie, and it's ridiculous. It is not good at all. Uh, Drake pretty, Bell, uh, Drake Bell, Major Drake Bartista. Bell's in it. I swear, or, or maybe the killer just looked like Andy Dick. I remember Daddy watching Trejo. this drunk. And, oh no! Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, he's the slasher. There you <laughs> wow. go. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Batista did this movie the year after he did Guardians of the Galaxy. I was so drunk when I watched this, it felt like it wasn't a real movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I bought it on DVD afterwards because I found it at like a store for like $2. Uh, I, I don't remember much of it. I just remember laughing like an idiot throughout most of it because it you just reading through that cast, I don't even remember Batista being in it. Hans that Andy Dick? Uh, yeah, that's Andy. Allegedly, oh. it's somebody else, but he probably pops up when they unmask the killer. <laughs> yeah, like I just, it's it's, it's insane. Uh, that looks this like, like Michael. To me. Mike, it's like Michael Jackson before he died. <laughs> oh, there, yes, you, you, yeah. I love you. Can just tell by the body language <laughs> when it's him. Oh yeah, that's definitely him. Hans, can you Google Eric Roberts Christmas? <laughs> I feel like I saw this on Tubi. 
I didn't remember Drake Bell being. There's in no that. K in Eric. My bad. So this. Oh, oh this, Christmas this, in Compton. This, this, there we go with Keith David, God and the dude from damn. Hanging with Mr. Cooper, one of the sons. Wait, Orlando Brown wasn't that the kid from uh, Kid Genius or one of those oral old series? How many no, of these dudes are just getting blackmailed for cheating on their wives or something? <laughs> like, oh no, that's a Raven guy. That's who that is. That's a Raven. <laughs> uh, the other guy is from Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Mark Curry. This guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. maybe the Steve Harvey yeah. show. Another we... another cover with Eric <clears throat> Roberts being photoshopped in with black people. Well, there's also a karate Christmas miracle, and he's right there. Oh, fuck. That's right. <laughs> ah, hold on. No, you got to play the trick. Read the description of this movie. This this movie uh, sounds uh, insane. It could only happen on Christmas. Go to IMDb. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I remember finding this movie and thinking it was the most insane thing I've ever heard. This is kid after caught he... the karate. Oh my god, how long is this fucking? <laughs> I just after read he... the first line. <laughs> after his father disappeared during a mass shooting on Christmas Day the year before, precocious ten-year-old Jesse Genesis, great name, creates a twelve-day Christmas list of tasks. He believes that if he completes them all, including becoming a self-taught karate black belt his father will return on christmas day jess's sophisticated workaholic mother amy super nintendo believes that her husband died in the shooting but visions that jesse reports to her give her a glimmer of hope after abby enlists the aid of an eccentric psychic turned law professor a roller coaster thriller ensues and the trio unravels an unexpected mystery and maybe just maybe We'll witness the delivery of a miracle that can only happen on Christmas. What? Dude, you, know <laughs> you, you know how you really bring that one home is the twist is dad is the shooter the whole time. <laughs> dad, you don't have to kill people anymore. I learned karate. <laughs> uh, so I believe Eric Roberts plays the father. And there are three screenwriters on this film. How about that? Hang on, what's he credited as? Wait, isn't David Landau the guy who used to do Anthony a Cumbia? podcast with Anthony Cumbia? Steven Crowder's yeah. co-host? I don't <laughs> think it's that Dave Landau. Should I look for the trailer of this? Hold on, Martin also, Cove is in this movie from Cobra Kai? Wow. I, I, I... The name Jesse Genesis also sounds like a porn name, and it's the kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martin man. Cove. Yeah, what does he play? He's not even credited in like the top... 10 people? Yeah, it's Cobra Kai. Guy. Yeah, man, Ooh. Marty Cove. Eric. Eric he was is also, James Whitmore. Wasn't he just in a VFW? Was yes. he one of the... And he is uh, also notoriously expensive for some reason. I think because he got cast in some commercials recently, so he thinks he can bilk a little bit more money out of production companies than what he might have been able to get otherwise. Justice for all productions. Wow. Okay. This is All right. not gonna. This is gonna be good. Ooh, BLM be productions. <laughs> Dad said if I learned karate, he won't die in a shooting. <laughs> well, as you know, he just started. And he oh wow! Did you see oh, that God. Oh, oh God! We have two kids. Uh, battling it out in the dojo and there's an Asian kid who takes a swing well, as you know, at a very started. slow <laughs> rate. But man, he's a quick study. That kid is tough. He got that from his father. The physical tough. That woman is like <laughs> oh, he took 19. Him down too. Yeah, I have to earn my black belts by Christmas and I have to teach myself. What? Jeff, <laughs> I hope Eric Christmas? Roberts is the husband and if that's, that's, the, if that's belt, the mom. It'll bring his dad back? I just saw that. I'm telling you, he's alive. I need to get that black belt. You know. What? Because I'm having nightmares? Yeah. Yeah. And your kid's having nightmares, too. Did you know that? Is that somebody's aunt who showed up oh, that wow. day? Oh, wow. Oh. What the fuck? That was Is that a uh, screening of The Dark Knight? Oh, oh, oh my oh, God. Oh, whoa. Hold on. Back it up. <laughs> we went right past him. <laughs> we went right past him. <laughs> we will all. It's a still so, image. Hold on. It's a. It's the. Wait. It's not. Oh no. There's it's not. A, okay. No. Moving, there's a. But... Sh there, look. Hold on. For the uh, audience yeah. uh, who's only mm -hmm. listening, th they cut to a theater, an empty theater, 
a dark theater. And there appears to be uh, a video of Eric Roberts on the theater screen. But it looks, uh, I mean, clearly it was superimposed with chroma key. And they didn't zoom the video into the, the screen perspective and dimensions. It's just a corner of his chin and mouth. So it looks like it's playing directly by, it's not even perspective to the, the screen to make it look realistic. Okay. It's just a corner of the video. That, that has I don't Roberts. even think is a real theater. I think that's a school auditorium and it looks You're right. like they made a fake green screen on the back wall because you can see the curtain hanging down in some of it over the top. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's yep, just, yep. it's a box over. So it's kind of like what Hans was saying. It's a still shot of the room, I think, that they no, just no, put a... They do is move the a little bit. Moving? Okay, because no, like they they the actors move slightly, but no. What I'm saying it, though, the the lost. actors moving in that frame, the shot of the room, I think, is a still shot that they just put a green screen box on, and the only actual movement is inside the green screen. Like I'm pretty sure this is just a picture of an auditorium that they put a green screen into. Yeah, I don't see any grain or any light on the screen that might be flickering. You know, the exit signs maybe uh, glowing yeah. a little bit. I don't see any of that. <laughs> this does feel very it's still just, photo. It's fucking amazing. They couldn't even oh, get into wow. school. Your husband. Did you hear that wipe? You know what he sees? That's what he transition. Sees? <laughs> that should have been safe for the karate sounds. You know what he only takes he a swing at him. Your husband, yeah, your the husband, Asian his kid. Little daddy that is gone and that's the husband? Oh, that's, that's the, the dad? Husband. Oh, what a creep. He, Did you see that hairline? <laughs> oh, my God. Said, <laughs> he better stay with He disappeared during he a mass shooting, husband. and that guy is just your kneeling husband. down on what looks like someone's grave, stands up <laughs> smiling, and walks <laughs> off into the distance. He's gone and disappeared. Well, they, <laughs> did they do the whoosh sound again as he's walking <laughs> away? Yeah, the action is where the action happens. Your husband, his little daddy, that is gone and disappeared. Getting a black belt is not going to bring back daddy. These are just dreams you're having. But are they just dreams? Maybe, maybe Bob is just trying to reach you and Jesse from some other world or something. You saw the world here? of karate. At your college? <laughs> yeah. This is definitely <laughs> I love that the wife still the wants to be with her husband, um, though, if it is possible that he's going to come back because of karate. <laughs> <laughs> like, that'll get the family back together, and she he won't have shitloads of explaining to do. This is what Cobra Kai should have been about, but bringing back <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miyagi back from that. I need you to tell me if my husband is alive or dead. Dad will be coming home soon. I prove that I earned my black belt. I'm sorry, I can't sorry, tell you if your husband's still alive. Oh, nice. no. Martin Cove okay. did a at-home green screen mm -hmm. clip talking to the mm -hmm. camera. And there's a, an amusement park, which is in very sharp focus. But as a matter of fact, it's, it's sharper than him on the screen. Uh, and he looks he pretty do. rough. He looks like he's cosplaying Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely before the Cobra Kai money came in and cleaned him up. He did the punch again. <laughs> he disappeared with Whitmore, like seconds after the shooting. That sounded like Bob's voice. He's stronger than all of us put together. Bob! Bob! <laughs> it looks like he's humping the floor. Wait, hold on a second. Is this the same clip as the one they played in the theater? One there second. are times I'm afraid. Let me just go back to where the fuck That's is it? That's a very terrible face to be. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay, no, it's not. All right, yeah. it's just the same uh, room. It's just yeah, it's the same day. Yeah. Oh my god. This rocks. <laughs> this is a new Christmas classic. It's all on YouTube, by the way, for free to watch. Oh really? Yeah. Damn. Maybe we should watch that instead of Scrooge. <laughs> he comes home i think yeah based on that reaction oh well yeah, it just gave it dead. away he breaks the wood and he gets his black belt and then his dad miraculously shows up kenneth del vecchio nice a julie kimmel film 
Wow. Yeah. A woman did that. Yeah, I was going to say, women can also make bad this, Eric Roberts I th- movies. I think the first time we've ever covered a female filmmaker on the show before. So, uh, we're making progress. Can we just skip to the end to see how it ends? I was Let's about just... to say the same thing. <laughs> with a banger. I was like, <laughs> I was like we, we should see if it comes back or not. I'm intrigued now. I want to see Eric Roberts' scene, and I want to see the end. That's all I want. Okay. And is he all as right. thrilled to come back as he is to leave in the trailer? <laughs> Okay, here we are. Uh, what? So, no, huh? he wants what are you doing? This, you're on mute. Spelled by Christmas Day and teaching yourself. Yep, he much. just looked directly into <laughs> the this camera is twice. Whoa. <laughs> think That's transition. It's just that things need. MTV style editing. Look at that panties. <laughs> they can ask why, but they'll never understand. The people they hear about on the news. It's a very 90s. They don't understand. Only those that come here tonight. Where is he watching? Is she watching this in the theater? <laughs> yeah. What is she like looks like she walked in on somebody fall. watching a porno. <laughs> like you. Yeah, he wasn't even on set, so he shot this at his home too. This town learns what it's like to be afraid. Oh, that's a nice. You can see his oily pores in his nose. No makeup. All right, let me see if I can find the other Eric Roberts scenes. Because I'm sure there are very this few and far in between. How about all so these? so incoherent. They're showing newspaper articles of, of the killer. But newspaper articles him. with photos shot inside the theater. They were just standing <laughs> in only moments. Yeah, ago. where the clown was sitting watching the video of maybe himself if it's Eric Roberts in the clown mask. Do you like this set design of just random cans or Great whatever? Fight. <laughs> I got to stop worrying so much about my own writing. <laughs> How about that picture of her right there that they took three yeah. minutes before shooting? Yeah. Put this sweater on over <laughs> where you were. Let me see. Oh, oh should, we, should we There's see the a fight? poster yeah, the on the wall. Fight. Did you just see that poster on the wall, though? That's two guys what? fighting in MMA gear, and it just says great, great fight, fight in giant yeah. letters. Oh no, I missed movie. it. Oh my God. They love that one pizza box. Great fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's the theater scene. Okay. It's the, the, the theater is on fire. What is that? What is his. Is he a demon? Is he the <laughs> devil in this movie? Oh, wow. Oh. oh, he's dreaming it. That's why. Okay. Dreaming of the day that the clown man came to the theater and <laughs> shot everybody and made his dad disappear. Okay, Martin Cove pops magic. up in the theater also here. I guess the theater is just his dreams, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he oh, is the killer. Oh, Martin Cove is the clown. But that's a different clown. You're yeah. right. That's a different mask. <laughs> that's because they didn't go to Martin Cove's home. Martin Cove shot this himself. Yeah, just find a clown. <laughs> That'd be great mask if he really red is. Hair. He's like, I was the killer the whole time, and I'm your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's her dad? What is going on? No, no, no. That was terrible. One more time. Let's do another take. Happy birthday. He sounds drunk. Yeah, I was going to say, he sounds like he's been drinking before shooting this. Yes. <laughs> oh, shit, hold on. All together. He doesn't Happy remember being birthday. in this movie. <laughs> and Aurora. As your birthday. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rough name to say when you're in touch. I'd like to give you this palace theater. I hope we don't get uh, copyright <laughs> over this. <laughs> Wait, by this. I'd like to kiss you all you on the yeah. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Sorry, give you the theater. <laughs> She's got big plans for this place. He's waiting. Oh, he's, God, he's trash. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for him to fall out of frame. 
<laughs> I'm fucking oh, sweating. This movie rules. <laughs> 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 oh shit. Yeah, Hold Rob Zombie, step your anywhere. game up. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. He just did he come back up? Oh. It's the dad. Never mind. That's Dude, not his I might have called it. The dad might be the shooter. <laughs> Isn't this the guy who tried to kill Bjork? You must watch for yourself. <laughs> you all must watch for yourself. Wouldn't it be funny though? if she also had to learn karate to some get her dad seen, back? Some is not. <laughs> this is me and this is real. But if I'm not here, not exactly here. What the fuck? Is uh, editing. Oh, she's dreaming. Oh, okay. So yeah, most of the movie happens. She's, is... she's also missing a dad from possibly gun magic. Oh wow, she that was, was so... reading. She's a psychic now. I need some whiskey. Oh, right. oh wait. Hey. Or was, was she the old lady when she oh. was young? Wait, hold on. Did she? Oh yeah, that might be it. Actually, this is okay. So this she's... is like The Shining, where she's the Scatman Crothers <laughs> character, and this you, is Danny Torrance. Hear? Just pay attention to how she delivers. I need some whiskey. Sounds like she's had whiskey already. This is the Scatman Crothers. I need some whiskey. I need some whiskey. <laughs> I just need a drink now. What? What did you Sounds see? like you've had some, lady. Just Let's see. Down. I think that that comes back. Let me see. Pounds a handle. Jenny Walker shots, please, immediately. This is her every Friday night. <laughs> just smash cut to the bar. <laughs> I, I I'm like blinking and missing that, transitions. That Mark was dead and that Bob was alive. Like Bob. that Kevin McLeod. Bob's the dad of the kid. No, he's the shot from the trailer. Mark shot. is her dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mother and I are very proud of Jesse. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh that's so sweet. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I, I think that he's putting into this her dad's like 50 oh, or mom's 80. <laughs> this is one of those problematic age gap relationships yeah, where I was talking about. 19. <laughs> Why are they showing him Man. doing push-ups badly he so much? Beat the shit out of that grandma. <laughs> his mom I was say, his line of sight was on the old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you old you bitch! Hold the board? Does his <laughs> hold on? Does his karate outfit say BBC on it? Uh, yep. yes, it does. <laughs> Kick him in the BBC. <laughs> Do you want me to hold the board? He kind of looks like uh, like Elliot Roger right? a bit, don't he? Look at those juicy <laughs> lips. Yeah, every shot goes soft. Have you guys noticed that? Like, it starts okay, but then yeah. it goes south. I think the lens they use... Yeah, look. So what year did this come out? You want to hit the IMDb and make this sure This is only a, a two-year-old movie. <laughs> Do you want me to hold the board? Stop. I would like to hold the board. Stop. Professor, would you like to hold the board? Stop. Me? Oh, no, no, no. no. Looking at Jesse, he might break my fingers along with that board. Stop. That's what I'm talking about. I think a man needs to hold that board. What do you mean? A woman can hold a board. Yeah, you hold it, Grandma. Uh, <laughs> if he kicks Grandma in half, <laughs> you're supposed just to break this. Kicks Mom in the face. It <laughs> <Yeah>, completely misses. <laughs> breaks her neck. Here we go. <laughs> right <in the> <laughs> hold on. Did you see that face? <gasps> oh wow! <laughs> it Holy literally shit. happened. I don't know what's going on. I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even bother doing like a spirit thing, like well, anything. It's just like same okay, come patch in. here. Yep. Yeah. The same patch as this child. <laughs> I did it. I escaped. Oh my god! I'm like Hello, tearing okay. up. What? I was on target. Did you just say he escaped from what? From being <laughs> shot? <laughs> it be so much Multiple better. times. It would be so much better if he came back screaming, just like completely confused as to what the fuck is that going on. That would make more sense then. Hey, I'm, I'm just going to stand outside of this door <laughs> this and, then, and then when he breaks it, he's like, oh, uh, 
All right, I action. <laughs> I, I'm going to make a prediction right now that he his I escaped is going to be from prison because he did commit the mass shooting. <laughs> oh. They find the clown mask in his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the kid looks horrified. <laughs> what is there? Well, okay. Guess I was on target. Okay, let's let's just uh, suspend this belief for a second and pretend that this actually happened mm. don't you think they would be horrified with the fact that someone <laughs> just came back from that she's That's just right. like yeah she's like yeah i figured this would happen yeah like the mom oh, in the oh. freeze frames before the oh, kid turns okay. around everybody does look horrified for a moment like what the fuck is going on and he wouldn't know that karate saved him either because he's been yeah. in some, like cosmic hell zone <laughs> like Soft. Soft. He did it. Soft. And he'd still be like screaming and running from gunfire <laughs> from the, <laughs> the mass shooting. Or they he comes back, he's still got bullet holes in him. He just falls over. <laughs> it's Christmas! <laughs> this is oh, exactly is exactly like hey. Spider-Man No Way Home, where he now, did the deed, he, he saved his dad, the dad came back at the last minute. It's a miracle. Now What's about this, this indie filmmakers using papyrus? Like, why, why is <laughs> yeah. that the font of choice? It's free. Uh, I was going to say, now you have to imagine that uh, Julie Kimmel, or whatever the fuck her name is, <laughs> was doing pretty bad in her karate classes as a kid when her father was tragically gunned down in a mass <laughs> shooting, and this is a niche film she wrote to work through all of that because uh holy shit i'm sorry they do have <laughs> kevin mcleod on the soundtrack i made that joke <laughs> not even 10 15 minutes ago scroll up a little more this david there you go it is, yeah. four <laughs> kevin mcleod cool. tracks amazing Amazing. That's great. What? Uh, hey, what is the, the name of Eric Roberts and Martin Cove's characters? I, I want to get an idea of who they were in this film. Clown Boy 1 and 2. Uh, Eric Roberts is James Whitmore. They give him a last name, which is more than you can say about most characters. And what's the other guy's name? Graham Palace, right under him. Oh, Martin Cove, yeah. And there's yeah, a, but Bob, Bob Genesis. Yeah, Bob Genesis is the dad. That was the fucking that. Oh, we should have watched the mass. Do you guys get it? It's Genesis because Genesis is the beginning of everything. He's coming <laughs> yeah. back, and it's a new beginning, guys. That's right. It's, it's very oh, it's a, deep cut. It's another Jesus <laughs> allegory. I love oh, niche wow. karate. Karate brought him back from the dead. That was great. Oh, oh, um, dude. Yeah, so go watch Rob it. Zombie it's on. Movie. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> it's on Family Central. It's a channel on YouTube. You can find a Karate Christmas Miracle. Uh, Man, that great. was fantastic stuff. Um, uh, how do we? How how do we even go back to Rob's? I don't think we. I don't know if we can. Rob Zombie, you got to make a Christmas movie. <laughs> oh, man. Halloween. All right, so. We went from Christmas, we went from Halloween to Christmas, and we're going to go back to Halloween and act natural. Wait, about hold it. on, like, hold on. Before we move back, uh, there's a comment here that says, oh, same guy who did the voice for a talking cat? I'd know the voice anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're like some weird minority group that's not watching all of these Eric Roberts movies. He's way bigger than we, we perceived. Oh it man! Was truly a mistake. It's gotten, not it's getting ninety nine ninety nine thousand views. This movie yep. on YouTube only. Jesus. You underestimate the power of Jesus. Yeah. Well, it, it is free. It's easy to find. It has a very distinct name. It's Christmas time, so it's going to come I'm back fucking... in season every year. Wholesome I'm... family content. What's him? not from laughing? <laughs> what am I doesn't love a good <laughs> mass shooting around Christmas. 
Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. I'm, I'm glad uh, movies are back. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> New Christmas classic. Uh, Karate Christmas miracle. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I love the hard end to that, too. It's just, yep, he's back, and roll credits. Yeah. Uh, nothing else. We don't see him, you know, it's no faraway shot of the family hugging or anything. No, 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 just keep it rolling. It's all one shot. Well, they anyway. only have one lens, so you can't go wide because everyone will be soft. That's why it kept going soft whenever everyone kept getting close to each other. <laughs> you want everybody to be as hard as possible. <laughs> Um, Hans, did you get around to even checking out a trailer to Lords of Salem or 30? Those are the only movies that, uh, precede, uh, Halloween 2, correct? Uh, hold on, I need to go back to Rob Zombie. I'm, I'm in a, I have I like 20 right. tabs of completely unrelated stuff. Like, and then uh, three Anthony from hell. Michael Hall. Yeah, Anthony Michael yeah. Hall. <laughs> three from hell, 31 as well, uh. I think 31, then three from hell, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Three from hell was 2019, I, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, 31 is 2016, uh, Lords of Salem 2012, and Halloween 2, 2009. Uh, Spencer, <laughs> do you have any particular thoughts on... I mean, where do you think Rob Zombie falls off between Halloween and by the time he gets to Lords of Salem? Oh, man. I honestly think uh, Lords of Salem is what really did it in for me. I didn't like that movie fucking at all. Is that the crowdfunded one? Uh, no, 31 no, was crowdfunded. That's oh. 31, and that's... Uh, that's that's rough, because that it's, it's similar to literally what I'm working on right now, and that was like part of the reason was... I had I had this idea years ago, like coming out of high school, I wanted to do something like this. And then Rob Zombie announced 31 and I was like, oh, this is really similar. And that happens a shitload, especially in comics and just writing in general. You are working on something and something else fucking comes up and you're like, damn. And there's a lot of stuff that I've just shelved or completely tossed out before. But I just like put this thing aside for a while and then 31 came out and that was like not what it was pitched as uh, any of the, the concept art or anything or everything he talked about for it. And then I think it was kind of so like shoddily put together and pitched that I don't even think Kickstarter or Indiegogo would allow him to put it on their website. So he literally crowdfunded it like on his own website uh, and it was really messy. Uh, none of the money seemed to really be spent on the film unless he just paid all the cast and crew really well. But uh, I think Lords of Salem was technically before that. And that's when he starts to really fall off. But uh, mm. like 31 was, I, I think, where it's real. Like, I thought he was done with movies after that. Uh, and he just got that Monsters project. Uh, and he did three from hell basically of his own accord. And you can tell that like he funded that out of pocket because it's nothing. It, there's a lot of Final Cut Pro presets that are applied to the news footage and to the late Sid Haig. Uh, sure. Yeah, Lords of Chaos is not a particularly good film. Salem. It has a good. Sorry. Uh, what did I say? Lords of, of oh, Lords of Chaos is a, a Jonas that? Ackerland film about the oh. founding of. Uh, certain black metal bands. Vol oh, yeah, he did and... the Haunted World of El Super Bisto after Halloween 2 oh, as well, geez, but that's an yeah. animated yeah, yeah, yeah. movie, and it's it's like, feels like what 12-year-old Rob Zombie would think would be really cool, and what, like, 10-year-old children would probably enjoy, but it's made for adults. Uh, I never checked that. I've, I've seen all of his films except for the, I've seen pieces of that one. I think that's where he worked with Tom Papa, and then he might have directed Tom Papa's stand-up special. Yeah, he did, yeah. Horrible. I hate <laughs> Tom Papa. What an unlikable guy. A weird-shaped head. I don't know. I mean, I do know how he, he managed to become so successful, being friends with Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld mm -hmm. likes to tote him out every so often. I remember there was like a, a dating therapy advice show that Tom yeah. Papa hosted on, on NBC. On like NBC. Mm -hmm. And they were like, presented by Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> And he maybe appeared on one episode as a guest. 
God, talk yeah, about a guy the... whose name is worth absolutely fucking nothing, but still somehow carries weight. Seinfeld is because of the sitcom as a currency. He can do anything at any time with any production company, and people will just be like, "Oh yeah, it's going to be amazing." But has it been amazing? No. Are you like B movie? Being Larry David on TV, basically. Yeah. What you don't think B movie's a bang? You don't think B movie's a banger? <laughs> No, I don't think B movie is a banger. <laughs> okay, uh, so thirty one was he made a hundred uh, million and a half for it, apparently. That was the, that budget, was the budget for it. That's what Wikipedia says. For thirty one. Um, yeah, and the box office was eight hundred fifty thousand. Oh, that sh- that sounds about right. Yeah, no, I thought for some reason you said three from hell for a second. I was, I was like, damn, he got that much money together because. Three from Hell, I'm pretty sure I read that he had funded it on his own. He didn't really have much backing, and then he sold it after the fact, uh, which just shows, like, how much he has fallen off in the eyes of most people, too. Like, like people don't want to watch your movies now, dude. 31 uh, million and a half, it didn't even get, like, a real theatrical release. It got a Fathom event. Well, uh, what I just wanted to say real quick about uh, Lords of Salem is that there is a pretty good vintage-style horror novel. It's kind of Peter Strauby uh, that Rob Zombie wrote. Even though it was really uh, Brian Evans or BK Evans, I think is the pen name he used for that. Uh, that reads pretty well, has good atmosphere. It's kind of spooky, and I recommend that over the film itself. 31, I watched for the first time a couple of months ago on Tubi again, and I thought that was a big old piece of shit, but it was actually more watchable than I was anticipating. I thought it was just going to be completely, but it also does nothing original, does nothing interesting or new. It just kind of feels like a very lesser version of what he's done before. Um, and it, it really, I don't know. I can't even say it falls apart. It's just not good to begin with. It's no, eroded it's a- from the foundation. It's purely his like visual backbone is going to carry everything like I was talking about earlier. And that's like his whole selling point on that one. And it's completely off the deep end by three from hell. Lords of Salem, too, is also the last one, I believe, that got an actual conventional release because 31, like I said, was a fathom event. And then I think three from hell went like straight to shutter. Lords of uh, Salem, too. Uh, I mean, yes, it was a conventional theatrical release, but that was also same day VOD, and that was one of the first titles to do oh. that. I think we might have talked about that briefly on um, our Halloween show, but that was back in what 2013, 2014, when that was not all that common. There was uh, still 2012, to... even. So okay, I, yeah, they would have been right at the beginning of all of that. Right, they were just starting to dip their toes in that water, and that I remember was on demand for Comcast. It was on on demand uh, the same day as it was hitting theaters around Boston. So. Uh, yeah, it, it, it seemed like Halloween 2 was uh, really Rob Zombie cashing out whatever credibility he had to conjure up an audience, and they didn't fully trust him after that. So uh, 3 from Hell, that was a Fathom event, right? So he did a No, 31 event. was the Fathom event one. Got it. Okay, well, so did he do a road show then for 3 from Hell? There was some kind of uh, uh, change-up. Th- with the I release think of that. it was limited release, and then that one was the one that I think went direct to Shutter. Mm. Uh, oh, it says here that it says here that the it was given a special three night theatrical engagement through Fathom, that's what Fathom it was. events okay. too, three from Hell. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that did Fathom as. Yeah, I knew the Fathom one for thirty one because uh, I ended up not backing the the campaign for the crowdfund because it, like I said, it looked really it looked sketchy for a guy like Rob Zombie who's so big that he couldn't just hire someone to like write something that was coherent just for the pitch page to make people assured that their money was going to something good, which is why I was like, oh yeah, knowing Kickstarter and Indiegogo's policies and everything. If your stuff sounds like a scam on paper, nine times out of 10, they won't even let the thing go live. Like if they catch it, they're not going to, that's what it sounded like. But I worked at the, or I was like, uh, still in contact with some people at the theater when 31 came out and I got into the fathom event, like completely free, uh, the first night and uh, what fucked that movie over is the Fathom event started with a 20 minute opener that showed uh, behind the scenes of a bunch of scenes 
and it sh- one of the main scenes that it shows is the inciting incident of like when the the heads all start killing people and it spoils like the the setting off point of the movie and you basically you know the first actor to get killed and how they're going to get killed and who kills them i love when they do that i love when they tell you what's going to happen and who dies in the movie before you see it yeah in and it's not even like it's like a scene at the beginning of the movie and then it flashes backwards it's literally just like a behind the scenes fathom event clip that was exclusive to the event they said and then it ended up on the dvd of the movie of course it's like this isn't going to be exclusive to this event when was the last I time guess. he was able to make his money back on a film? Because I just looked up Three from Hell. It only made, and granted, it had a three-night screening, right? So maybe uh, Shudder is really where it's going to make its money back, I would assume. Uh, it made only $2.2 million of its $3 million budget. That seems like a pretty small threshold to have to pass, and they couldn't even do that. Now, obviously, with the, um, the, the films that were prior to that, it seemed like there was a struggle as well. Um, Halloween I mean, two, uh, budget was fifteen million and it made thirty nine. I think that's the last one. And that had the Halloween name, so that's almost a guarantee yeah. that you're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna make some money. So I don't. It's hard to with slasher movies. Yeah, that's I don't know. It's I just peculiar. think that I just think that if Sid High was too sick to act in it, where it was going to be reduced to a what five ten minute role in the movie, just don't make it. Just leave the ending open from Devil's Rejects and that's it. Because here, he looks like he's dead already in the movie. No disrespect because he's a legend, but he looks horrible. Like he looks like, all right, let's just let him fucking die. Like he looks horrendous. And then you introduce this new character that nobody knows who's not very interesting or, or likable in that twisted way that those characters are. And he just feels like it's not part of the original two movies so it, it just feels like like what is this thing he what am feels I too close to that bill mosley character too the yep. new guy so it, yeah. it's almost redundant to have him in the mix at all yeah. and yeah sid haig this was the last movie sid haig did before he he died or was released uh, uh not uh, right around the i thought he had died during the the movie but no 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 uh he died around the time of its release so yeah he was just that sick and like you said he looks it he looks terrible. um he had gotten i believe a terminal diagnosis early on mm-hmm. and that's the whole thing was the script was basically rewritten on the fly in the middle of production on three from hell and you can tell like basically the onset i remember early on in production when they like they did a big news thing and that sid was basically out of the movie and that all of a sudden rob zombie had to rewrite a bunch of it um but they were kind of shooting it like having that's what i liked about it was they always kind of shot things like just like friends having fun like how you guys shoot stuff just with a a way bigger budget they're getting together making the stuff they want to make which is why i always add like a a respect or a little bit of an admiration for the guy and like they really are all great friends and you can tell when sid got sick and they made that announcement he had to do the rewrites that it just like took all the wind out of his sails and it seemed like even he didn't want to make the movie anymore but had already put a bunch of the studio's money into it and essentially had to give them a final product and uh once they bring Richard Brake in the movie, just nose dives. It's like you said, Richard Brake's just playing Otis part two. And it's weird. Cause he's a, he's a pretty good character actor. They yeah. could have had him do some really interesting stuff and be completely different uh, from the other two. I would have gone like, why not make him a little bit more sane? Like if you need a new sub in for uh Spalding, uh, oh, man, yeah. I almost just said Professor Spaulding for some reason. <laughs> Captain Spaulding. Uh, then you put in a guy who who seems more sane and grounded like Spaulding was. He was kind of like the the compass for the both of them, like would reel them back in when, when Baby and Otis were getting too out of control. It was like, you know, we still need to keep up some sort of appearance so we're not fucking caught immediately. And instead it's just like, bring in a another guy who's just as insane if not more insane and it could only like every one of those movies it can only really go down one path or one or two paths really they're either gonna like go into hiding or it's gonna end horribly for them and it's like how many times can you do that over and over again before people catch on to it and get bored 
it didn't even really use like the slasher formula. That's why I think the first two work and then it's just beating a dead horse because then it kind of did. It turned into this weird half slasher, half action movie. That last one's just a big shootout. Mm -hmm. Just just focus on Otis Driftwood. That's a that's a crazy and interesting enough character where just make him go balls out and that's it. That's your movie. You don't need to add another character that adds nothing. And instead, it just feels like, yeah, well, it, it feels like what it is, you know, just a rush change. And w- let's see what we can figure out quickly so that we can introduce a new character instead of Spalding. But I feel like if you had just focused on the baby and ba- that's her name, right? Yeah. The, a baby and the Otis character that would have been better because it's two characters that have already been established in two movies that people like instead of just bringing someone new in the third movie of the trilogy to uh replace one of the most beloved horror icons of the 2000s which is Captain Spaulding so it was never going to work I don't understand why they went that way it should have just been canned when he got sick and everything uh, and and they just didn't like that's that's well, really the problem the purpose of the movie was to get rob zombie out of director jail which it seems to have done the job of i he only went back to the well to have something that would perform well at the box office ideal even though clearly it didn't uh, i had a very limited run and it was very uh you know bare bones by comparison uh to those other two but he wanted something that and I remember him saying this on maybe it was Joe Rogan or some other podcast he wound up did it, uh, doing around that time to promote the film that he only did it for that reason. I think maybe it was, uh, you know, in front of a live audience or something when he was presenting the film. I have no idea. I can't remember now. But yeah. um, he was very direct about that, that that came, that was coming first as opposed to any sort of artistic integrity uh, to revisit these characters because they were dead. They do die at the end of Devil, Devil's Rejects. And then it's all retconned in the beginning yeah. of this movie. It's like, oh, I know there's a, again, Mr. Miyagi that rubbed his hands and pulled the bullets out of them and, and they're, <laughs> yeah. <yep. laughs> they're fine. Yeah. Someone did enough karate to bring them all back. <laughs> yes. I would much ra- look, if they're going to do, if you're going to do a sequel to a movie or something, that involves a character that is clearly dead. Just do it and don't explain. Because the explaining it, first of all, is going to take away from everything that you have going on. Second of all, it's never going to read as authentic or real or believable. It's better if you just try and let it be and let people try and think, well, how does this make sense? Because it doesn't make sense. Just, well, well, maybe this comes before, even though he looks much older. He's got a mustache or something in this one. He didn't before. I don't know. He's 50 in this one. He was 29 in the last one. I don't know. How does this make sense? Just let them let them try and piece it together. Then you're he good. Had, he had a, a wrinkly, real... I was wrinkly 18-year-old. That's what he plays. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, he had like a really obvious and weird, surreal place he could have gone to where I feel like he might have actually done something cool with it. Yes, like he was the Spider-Verse where they Halloween come back to a dimension with <laughs> no. the phone. You bastard. Yeah, they, no. they, they turn good before they get shot. Uh, to the no, uh, I, I think he actually might have said something a while ago, but you, uh, you just have it you make their death cannon at the end and you do something weird like like what's hell for three fucking crazy serial killers like do some surrealist like throw them into some upside down world where you can go absolutely nuts with all your weirdo fucking horror stuff and now they're uh fighting through some new reverse of the the outside world like everybody they ever killed in our world they're now having to face down in some sort of hell you don't have to make it like fire and brimstone hell you you can still make it rob zombies weird upside down goth nightclub world but he could have done something really weird and different that wasn't just more of the fireflies saying dumb shit to each other and being dirty for 90 minutes like anything and it's it's just like a, a really forgettable movie when it comes down to it. That's why I, when we were talking about the first two earlier, Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses, those worked because they focus on the characters and it was the, the first couple goes around so that like that grimy varnish that he put on everything felt new and fresh with what everything else was doing at the time in movies. And now 
that's like in action movies and stuff now it's like oh we need everything to look a little bit darker and grittier just muck everybody up it's like it uh, like they might even be calling it zombieing them on fucking set at this point because it's almost become a meme what his movies are now where it's just like i was expecting the fucking monsters to come out and everything look like fucking toothless idiots like it's it it got old really fast and he completely forgot that he could write a good character and still make them grimy and just stuck with making it grimy and just fucking churning shit out. That last movie doesn't look like it was $3 million. He got a million dollars for each of the three of them. And it seems like he gave all, all of it to the three of them. Like, I don't know what the fuck that money was spent on. Half of the bad guys in it are just like guys in cheap suits with luchador masks, which I can tell you that's like maybe a $40 outfit per guy on scene. Like it's, it's crazy. They're all running around with like plastic guns and stuff. Pretty sure there's a scene where a guy fell on his gun and it like bent. And I was like, God damn it, dude. Like this is in full frame. Like it's 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 crazy. It's crazy that this is the one that got him out of uh, movie jail and then yeah. gave him a, a beloved. Fra- Fine, it's not a relevant franchise. I don't think it's many a people are. The, the, uh, no, the point is, it's a recognizable name and franchise yeah. that a big company owns. The, mm-hmm. uh, the monsters, for a while anyway, uh, were basically shoulder to shoulder with like the Adams family, like mm-hmm. they're 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 property like that. But uh, go on, Hans. I didn't mean to stomp over what you were saying there. I, I lost my train of thought, so you oh, can continue. Well, God, yeah. <laughs> it's like the only horror <laughs> franchise of our generation, really. I mean, there's like the paranormal activities now and Blumhouse shit, but thinking back to like us actually being like kids and teenagers, I can't really think of anything else from the 90s that wasn't already an established property from like the 80s. Uh, mm. Like, I genuinely can't now. <laughs> Yeah, from the 90s. Everything that I'm thinking Everything. of came out after the 2000s. Yeah. Conjuring, yeah. Saw, like every other, uh, maybe Final Destination, maybe something like that in the 90s. But yeah. Uh, do either of you think that he has the genuine capability to make a, a good film? Like a, or, or, well, a good film for Rob Zombie, anyway. Obviously, there's a certain curve here with filmmakers like him i do have respect for him though as mm-hmm. somebody who is an auteur because you know you're getting something that is going to have its own distinct flavor and be different from whatever other horror property or just film in general you're going to watch um and you can't really say that for too many directors that are actively working nowadays the only thing that i'm hopeful about in this month because i Love the monsters when I was a kid. That was one of my favorite shows. Uh, and uh, I was not excited when I saw that first image because they look nothing like the characters. And fine, you're not going to find people that always look like the original actors, but find someone that kind of looks like them, not your wife that looks nothing like you know the or well, original. He's, you know, actors. he's kind of like the modern John Cassavetes in that way. I, I would say, you know, but uh, no, he got Daniel Roebuck to play. Yeah, Grandpa, which is an interesting, but not like he wouldn't be in my top twenty for that Mm-mm. that character. And also, they changed yeah. his appearance. They gave him a did they? A I mean, I think they gave him a big mustache, like a prospector's mm-hmm. mustache. It's very strange. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm the one I'm not thing a, that I I'm not opposed to seeing it when it does come out. I, I don't have mm-hmm. any expectation at all. I think anyone making a monsters movie is going to be probably making a piece of shit. But Rob Zombie's monsters movie. I don't know. That could be. I feel like it's well, going to be an uphill battle, no matter what. Yeah, I, I think with him at least, at, you know, helming it, it's going to be something interesting. Well, it's very silly, right? It's a very yeah. silly show with very silly comedy. I don't think of Rob Zombie when I think silly monster. You know, uh, they just go uh, full uh, tilt, uh, Rob Zombie. <laughs> Yeah, they're all yeah. scalping people in the neighborhood <laughs> Lil- lily is killing people yeah I don't the know. humor I, found the, in his earliest movies was always sex humor it was it was what it yeah. was sid Haig fucking otis uh yeah, it's and, like uh, dbw jokes. it was uh mm-hmm. the the weird guy talking about eating pussy in the first one so yeah. it, it might be something like that it's just like it's like uh, oh. like sex <laughs> oh, humor no. to make normies no. uncomfortable <laughs> no don't do that to fucking Herman. You're gonna Herman's do just stomping, monsters. Just 
stomping people in this in their head with his giant yeah. boots. Talk about yeah, I, I mean, spider filled box. He's probably yeah, it's a spider web. <laughs> uh, he uh, he's a fan. I'm imagining because he's all into like all horror shit. So I, that's the one thing that I'm kind of like maybe he'll do good again, but I, I it's not the pairing that I would you know, prefer for a Monsters reboot or whatever it is they're trying to do with this. I thought the concept art and design stuff he was doing looks great. It always, like, blows my mind, like, how, like, uh, competent a creative he is and then how it always seems to fall apart somewhere in the, the directing aspect of things, but... Yeah, because, like you said, on 31, like, that that art it's uh it's really cool but like you said well i haven't seen it but you said that they, they didn't use it at all no right? I, I haven't seen it either i'd like to take a look at this yeah i think it was i i'm not like a huge monsters person so i don't know all the names no who is the, who would be Lily's on a 1950s mom, sitcom <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> the guy who likes burn notice <laughs> Hans, you could play herman monster herman i would love to play herman yeah uh let me see is this the one you're talking about, uh, Spencer? Uh, uh, I know there was some of Lily. I think I saw some of the house too. Uh, oh, that, that looks, looks no, that, that looks horrendous. This is what you thought looked like good, right? No, this is Spencer. This is what you thought. <laughs> <recommended>. Yeah, right. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. Have, this looks she's like got a, something I draw while I was high. <laughs> she's got a misfit tattoo, and Herman has a 13 tattoo on his arm. That's pretty cool. This is, exactly right, this is what, someone making fun of Rob Zombie. Yeah, clearly it was like uh, what they expected Rob Zombies to be. Uh, he had posted it himself, I'm pretty sure, and then uh, some more of it started getting shared around. But oh, is this yeah, it? yeah, that's some of it right there. It's like very reserved for Rob Zombie. Like I was expecting more Rob Zombie isms, but uh, it doesn't actually look that over the top. Like it almost looks more so like so close to the original source material. I'm like. Who the hell is going to watch this that isn't on their deathbed? They gave him Crocs. Me. Is that what that looks like? Uh, yeah, yeah he has a pla platform Crocs. <laughs> the Costa Rican autist community. <laughs> uh, first look at Igor from the Monsters. Where did you see that? Uh, that was back on the Google image page. Yeah. Oh, you, okay. you and like a small demographic of people in Russia... Yeah, this looks horrendous. I hate it. Is it going to be in color I, too? God damn. That looks like Beetlejuice. That's not yeah. grandpa. Yeah, it's. it looks like it's supposed to be limited color. Like they're all like painted black and white, but then there's like gels on everything. Hmm. Okay. It's a weird uh, take. Yeah, I'm not. Because I'm, I'm like, if you just paint everybody black and white, and then you're using really like really strong gels on everything, they're just gonna be whatever color you're you're shining on them. Like this is cool. I like the the house. That's yeah. fine, even though he looks tiny. But that's fine. But everything else is kind of like. Uh, like I don't know. Can we just pull I just, up the image of the three main cast members real quick for those tuning in right yeah. now via video on patreoncom slash res where you'll get bi-weekly episodes of this show? Uh, here we go. <clears throat> We've got uh, Sherry Moon Zombie as uh, sorry. What's what's the uh, wife's name? I uh, I don't remember. This shows how much of a fan I was. You know Herman, I know Eddie, but I, I can't remember her fucking name. But there it is. I think it's Miss Monster. That's Miss Monster, yeah. Mama Monster. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird I thought this was this Jeff time... Daniels. I was like, they got Jeff Daniels to play <laughs> Herman? What the heck? <laughs> I was like, this time around, I think Sherry Moon Zombie is like the one that fits in the most of all. Yeah, of them. But definitely. again, I don't know much about the monsters. They look fine. It's all right. It's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, how, how bad can you really fuck it up? Take a look at the, Google Monsters uh, 1990s. Because I know they did a couple of reboots uh, where they tried to get the Blows TV series mind. going again. And they did a TV movie or two. There was a Christmas one. Oh. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Oh, wow. That Jeez. Frankenstein rocks. <laughs> So 
that's what we're up against here. So it's like it's, one of those uh, Silver Mountain people. That's pretty, the the Dawn of the Dead zombie makeup. <clears throat> the guy from the uh, the dude who played the head vampire from the Lost Boys was uh, the Herman Munster of the eighties or nineties. Uh, so one of these. God. Oh yeah, nice. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, this was dude, fine. that looks like a Chinese man they painted against their will. <laughs> like he's got so much makeup in his eyes he can't open them. What's it called? The monsters today? My eyes to burn. Her. <laughs> so oh gonna, God, look at the one there. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. he looks so unhappy. Is he gonna color them? Like, oh God, I yeah. hope so. Uh, is this uh, uh yeah is that, is that guy black the uh, sun Herman? looks latin yeah i think maybe i don't know can you go to imdb they put a black Actually, kid in white just face. click the no click the uh, tmz picture because it says member him so uh, uh -huh. maybe might be onto something here hmm, what the, hmm. Was john quick. shuck oh what no, that's yeah. That, you know, that's Pete Diddy's assistant. It's not the same guy. Yeah. Can you just Google John Shuck? Is that guy's name like. Oh Farns my God! I don't. What the? What's this? <laughs> terrifying lady. God Close out damn, of this. Like... You're in like a 400 picture <laughs> gallery. Oh yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> I just realized that. That's like that looked like Roseanne, but worse. Uh, where's the John Shuck? I need to know who did these designs because this guy needs to be taken out in a field and shot. Whoa, he looks exactly the same. 73 episodes of this. That's just nearly syndication. That's why we never see it anymore. Fell short. He's Wait, insane looking, dude. That Without uh, the makeup? Eddie Monster there was on Step by Step. I think that was... Uh, not one of the sons on Step by Step, but one of the friends of the sons, like Cody's pal or something. He looks exactly like. Yep, that's a. Black he actually kind of looks like he kind of kind of looks like Fred Whitty, uh without makeup, but Boston. Yeah, Dick Tracy, English and German. Okay, all right. Well, he was Captain Painless? Huh. Match, yeah. Wait, what's oh, the And guy? he had a bit part in Dick Tracy as a reporter. That's weird. Is this the guy that you're talking about, Jason Mark Marston? He looks familiar. Yeah, he was a big time '90s sitcom actor. If you scroll down, oh yeah, he was Max in a goofy movie. Oh, He's got shit. a very distinct voice. But if you go to the the '90s, you're going to see him on probably Full House, Step by Step, Family Matters. Marcy. A lot of cartoons. Here yeah, in he was Indiana. Like Hocus Pocus, Monsters Today. Gummy Bears. General Where's Hospital. Step by step? Uh, I don't see Step by Step. It's It'll be there. Batman. Was the Dirk in Sonic. Do you know that character, Dirk from Sonic? <laughs> Me Full either. House. <laughs> Full House, yeah. Boy Meets World. I think it was Full House, not Step by Step. I think 96 is too late, isn't it? Uh, for step by step. Uh, do uh, maybe. Oh, damn. Step by step. Yeah, no. Step by. Oh, ah! okay. Aha! See? Oh, you fuck! I, told <laughs> <you how. laughs> I got. Dude, you. He was in fifty-three episodes. That's right. He was a main cast member. He was on TGIF in three different shows. This is teenage Clark Kent. And then he does nothing but voice yes. work after that. Allie McBeal. Diablo 3. Young Justice. Doc Sills. Yeah. Fake Trump yeah, it cartoon. Yeah, really is. David, he played David Duke. <clears throat> so, anyway. S stuff to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, all right. So, no, nobody answered the question aside from uh, us talking about monsters. Do you have any faith in Rob Zombie making a... A movie that is actually uh, not only just uh, enjoyable for being a Rob Zombie film, maybe, if you're into that sort of thing, where you can enjoy anything of his, but uh, capable of making a good Rob Zombie film. Yeah. Mm. 
Maybe, but I don't think this is the one. Let me put it this way. Do you have more faith in his ability to make a good film again or Kevin Smith's? Who said oh, of Three fuck. From Hell, he said Three From Hell was whore heaven. Now, I hate to be one of those shows that just reads you the Wikipedia page, which is every movie show. But that's where I found that out, along with the fact that RogerEbert.com gave Three From Hell four out of four stars. How about that? What? Yeah. He's rolling in his grave, his gay <laughs> grave right now. Uh, wait, Kevin Smith said he was whore heaven? Whore heaven. Why is he so horny? <laughs> Why is Kevin Smith so fucking horny? Horror, yeah, not um, whore, heaven. <laughs> horror. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I I don't think Kevin Smith since he started smoking weed, I think he forgot how to make compelling, interesting movies. I think uh Seth Rogan ruined that. Um, so I have no faith in the fact that he is capable of making anything interesting anymore by just his track record. Uh, what, the audience 58? score is lower than the critical score, which is just about fresh. It is two percent away from being fresh. Yeah, uh, he cried at Spider Man too. Just in case you guys are wondering, of course, I which I guess everyone, everyone knew. Uh, but yeah, I think I have more faith in in in, in Rob Zombie because his style is more uh, like aesthetic. It's more. You know, that grindy, like that dirty uh, Kevin Smith. It was all about characters just being smart mouthed. And that that's kind of it. There's not really much style to his the visuals of his movies. Uh, so if you lose that, if you, if you lose the script part of it, his movies are just whatever. Like, I just who cares? No one's watching Kevin Smith's movie because it's going to be interesting visually or he's going to be, you know, put out something that. Uh, if you uh, mute the movie, you know, it's why would you watch a Kevin Smith movie where Rob Zombie has more style to his filmmaking. So, yeah, I I believe he would be more capable of go, going back to his old uh, successes than Kevin Smith. I, you know, what? Their a lot of people are pretty parallel, yeah. rightfully shit talk the movie, but Yoga Hosers is pretty visually interesting, especially for a Kevin Smith film, which is very... Medium shot, over the shoulder shot, mm -hmm. wide shot. Yeah, Blame you like basic. the sausage people. You like the those. Yeah, it was the little sausage. It was different. Sausage, it was trying meat. something. It was uh, no. tusk. Tusk. Too. You I like hate tusk. tusk. No, Tusk is fun. I think Tusk is a fun horror movie, and Michael Parks gives a good performance. And now, it, now do you like it just because it's an A twenty four movie? Because yeah. I remember you saying that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, okay. I'm big on yeah. the A twenty four. I, I forget the A24 that's movie. even an A twenty four movie. That's fuck bonkers <laughs> yeah uh what about you spencer that's really tough um i was curious to see that kilroy was here one but that's another smodcast one that might may remember. never be seen at all because he wants to and he hasn't followed up on this just yet kevin smith said oh we're gonna auction this off as an nft and you okay, also get the up. rights to the movie you can hide the movie. You can change the movie. You could. It's up to you whether or not people ever see this movie. Okay. Okay. Kevin Smith can go fuck himself. Uh, <laughs> I don't even care that it's an NFT. I just think that's fucking stupid. Wait, what if he sell it as an NFT? Uh, His new Ke movie, Kilroy is here. Kilroy was oh. here, which is I'm pretty sure just like Tusk, another Smodcast idea where they mm. basically would like like what we're doing here, but they would just pitch like a whole idea back and forth until they fleshed out pretty much an outline for a film. And then they just didn't do anything with it for years. And then so, Tusk, they eventually did the, turn into something. But the format I think of the movie, Rob Zombie, I'm, I'm trying I'm, to think of Kevin Smith stuff. Sorry. I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea of the Kilroy was here uh, film structure, which is essentially it's like a series of slasher films. But in one movie, it's a bunch of people giving different accounts of this Kilroy killer. So you have you know, essentially little mini films broken up over 90 minutes, 110 minutes, however long it is. But him selling it as an NFT feels, first of all, like something he's not going to commit to because there hasn't been anything about it this year. It's supposed to come out this year. Has it not come out this year? He hasn't sold uh, the film as an NFT at all, but he has sold other NFTs. And also it feels like I know this is a piece of shit and I'm probably not going to make a whole lot uh, from a distribution deal. So maybe I can do it as a novelty here, cash in, 
and we'll put that into Clerks 3, which they just shot and seemingly are wrapping up in post at the moment. Very, very depressed about it. Everyone yeah. looks so old. Everyone just looks so tired. Like they're being, I mean, not like most of them have a career to begin with. They need but, it. But I, I guess they, ugh, yeah. Hans really isn't wrong though. I'm looking through his filmography as a director and really like Dogma. Uh, Chasing Amy. Uh, what's the Jennifer Lopez one? Red uh, State, Jersey I guess. Jersey Girl. Is, Jersey Girl. So just like visual interest though, like Red State is probably all right, but doesn't really amount to much of anything. Uh, it's all right exactly it's it's fine Clerks 2 had a really nice crane shot that just felt like wildly unnecessary when they brought out that like it uh was of like course. a big part of the budget mm -hmm. for that like musical dance number scene that they do uh yeah so it's like yeah visually he doesn't really have much going for him uh and evidently he's they announced a sam and twitch tv series which is from spawn if you no, guys are familiar old, old old that ain't happening that's just that's happening oh, at the same okay. time as the spawn sequel that todd mcfarlane is writing and oh directing okay and then Fox that's happens. just sitting here forever that's retarded uh he was supposed yeah. to do howard the duck with the guy who did aqua teen hunger force too and they pulled the plug on that that might have actually been interesting. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd have to go Rob Zombie all the way on this. I think he might still have something in him. And honestly, I'm pulling for them to just give him the money to do that Groucho Marx movie. Oh, uh, that would be wonderful. Stop fucking anchoring yourself down to just like horror grindhouse schlock. Like the dude can like create good interesting characters and he can tell a story when he wants to i think he's just like it's almost like he's typecast himself at this point mm -hmm. and he needs to like get away from that which is why i completely agree with hans too and like saying that i think monsters is the wrong property to be doing that we might just see another like this is like rob zombie going over fucking hilly territory like just he's gonna do one decent one and then bomb out again and then one decent one and bomb out again and i don't i i feel like kevin smith somehow is going to keep being on an upward trajectory and unless like rob zombie really knocks monsters out of the water i'm hoping i'm completely wrong because i do like him as a director even when he's not doing great things but I'm just I'm not a huge Monsters fan, so I don't like I can't wrap my head around the math of that coming out a net positive. You know, what would be great for that Monsters movie if they did what they did with the Raul Julia Adams family movies. But that, that's never going to happen. Turbo. Because I feel like, but, well, not just that, but I feel like those those movies like they feel like a movie. You know, there's a lot of craft that looks like it was put into them, like. I, I rewatched them recently. I think I've talked about them in another episode, but I enjoyed them a lot because they look like movies. Like it took me back to when they used to make movies, you know? Uh, and it, it feels like the director really cared about the about the property. So they, they're they good. Like I really enjoy them. Uh, if they did something like that with, with this Monsters movie, I, it might work, but I I don't know, especially after seeing that screenshot of, of Grandpa, green grandpa with the jails and shit and kind of like uh, i don't know it's, it's it's gonna look like the dr satan scene and and that's cool for a couple of minutes but not a whole movie uh that's I where know, i think being excited. a movie and not a tv series is gonna work out for it more so because i totally thought it was a tv series and i was like oh mm. fuck yeah uh i feel like Conventional wisdom would probably point in the direction of Rob Zombie making a better film, um, more recent or or going forward, uh, than Kevin Smith. But uh, I don't know. I, th I for whatever reason I think it'll be Kevin. I think Kevin Smith's next film after Clerks Three will probably be a plus and win a bunch of Oscars. That's my prediction. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck! Mm -hmm. Best director. Yeah. You know what? God damn you. He's you one think of he's these put directors. In enough time. No, I don't. Uh, but <laughs> he's one of these directors that falls in the same class and tiers as Spike Lee, right? Rob Zombie's not one of these guys. And Spike Lee made a whole bunch of really atrocious shit for 25 years. And then someone's like, what's Spike Lee up to? And they just glanced past everything he's done and said, hey, Spike Lee, do you want to deal with our studio? 
And, uh, yeah, we'll bring in this other guy who's been competent and very successful recently. He'll produce it, a.k.a. he'll cut off all the hard edges that are going to turn this into a piece of shit. And then we'll make your film. I think that's going to happen to Kevin Smith within the next 10 years if he doesn't die of a heart attack or some kind of cuckolding situation. So you think that a studio is going to give him money again? Yes. I think eventually there, someone's going to come around to giving him a contract that he, I mean, look, he almost did Howard the Duck, and he did He Man. Remember how which, long ago though? Yeah, how Netflix long ago was Howard the Duck? He Man was He Man was this. Everyone hate, but everyone hated He Man, and it's still doing well. They said it doesn't matter what people are saying about it as long as they tune in. I guess that's the difference between that and Cowboy Bebop, which had the plug pulled on it, right? So, right. Um, or maybe different expectations there based on the budget, because He Man is yeah. almost certainly yeah. a hell of a lot cheaper. Um, yeah. And Howard the Duck, I think, was a, about two years ago, but it it oh, only okay. it didn't go past the pilot stage. Yeah, and, it was hey, going to be. It was most likely going to be something for Disney Plus or something, and I'm sure they probably wanted to make it way edgier. It was before Disney Plus had really like really like solidified itself and now we're just in like we're on a train pipeline whatever you want to call it for just this shit forever it's just like comic book schlock i would take something like howard the duck over what we're getting now absolutely uh did the punisher show up in the or any of those uh, uh daredevil did spider-man just daredevil yeah he shows up as uh the attorney of peter parker I kept making jokes that the only way that movie could save itself is if uh, in the third act, the Punisher just showed up and started murdering Spider-Man. <laughs> then I would have been like, yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> like, I love I, MCU I suggested that exact thing at the end of Is It Kino with Mumkey Jones and, and Kino Corner right before That's recording. perfect. <laughs> I said they should do it. The only way to end the MCU is to have Dolph Lundgren's Punisher come in and wipe everybody out. Yeah, Punisher kills be... the Marvel Universe. It's it's there's a precedent in the comics, dude. It's a one insane. way to do it. Um, anyway, Dolph Lundgren oh is my... great, dude. That one, which oh like no God, sense at all. <laughs> I'm looking at the upcoming Disney Plus because I was curious about what the next franchise are going to ruin. Dude. And uh, yeah, there's a uh, well, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It came, just came out. Then there's mm-hmm. like 30 Star Wars things. They just there's a new ice, Goonies. new ice age. There's a the proud family movie coming out. You guys remember that? Wait, <laughs> they obtained Ice Age. Yeah, that was not a Disney uh, property before. That used to that be DreamWorks, Pixar, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was DreamWorks. I thought DreamWorks, it was Pixar yeah. for some reason. There's a new Cheaper by the Dozen movie. What? Wait, who was Dream? Hold on. Who was DreamWorks owned by, though? Were they a Fox property? No, they were... Um, Warner, think, wasn't it? No, they weren't owned by Warner. I think it was either Sony or Paramount had uh, had DreamWorks. Or maybe they were their own thing, because Spielberg fronted that with a bunch of other uh, extremely Universal. wealthy people. Oh, Universal did, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Who's so in the new Cheaper uh, by the Dozen? Is it Steve Martin and Bonnie Hunt again? Uh, Are they having see, more comes, kids, even though she's 70? It, com- it comes out in... March and no, Uh-oh. Zach Braff, uh, what Brittany, f- da- Brittany Daniel, Gabrielle Union, and Zach Braff are the top three. Um, we were all wrong. I see so there's a Blue Sky movie. Oh, Blue Sky. I don't even know what Blue Sky is. Uh, there's a uh, new Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers coming out. Um, Hocus Pocus 2, Pinocchio, Miss Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, Cars, <laughs> Zootopia. There's an, oh, well, She uh, Hulk, uh, Spider Man freshman year, I know what that is. I Am Groot, Marvel Zombies, Secret Invasion, Peter Pan and Wendy. That's another one. Peter Pan. Hey, you know yeah. Peter Pan's a hallmark of uh, of American culture. Is Peter Pan? <laughs> Three men and a baby. What? They're bringing that back too? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Who Who are the three men this time? Just the three of Let's us. See. They're all played by the baby. <laughs> yeah. We shouldn't be having this baby. <laughs> um. Yeah. Blue Sky. Uh. Is it is a Fox company? That's why I was. I was pretty ah. sure. Ice Age owned them and Disney acquired that. That's why it's like 
what is the end of next year? Like half of Fox's stuff is just like going in a vault because Disney is like ashamed of owning it or something. It doesn't fit with the guys... child friendly agenda. No, you're right. Now that I think about it, I think there was some Fox movie that I saw that opened with an Ice Age short with a little squirrel. And I think it might have been the Simpsons movie. I don't know. Yeah, and hmm. I guess they did those Rio movies. And it, basically every one of their movies is like based on animals. And I think they did the Peanuts movie uh, more recently. But yeah, most of their movies are like animal-based animated movies. And uh, the majority of them seemingly didn't make that much money. Ice Age is like what they're known for. They're also based like near me in Connecticut. Uh, hmm. Greenwich, Connecticut, which is actually like a town over from where Rob Zombie lived in Connecticut. Uh, I'm not sure if he's still here anymore, but uh, no, I tie it all he's, together. He's a uh, California based, but I, I know he does hang out pretty frequently in Massachusetts where wherever maybe he grew up because I think he's got family out there. Yeah, he had a place in Connecticut, too. That's kind of like on the line, but uh, he kept getting into arguments with the the town because they had like a skate park across from him in Sherry Moon's house and uh they didn't like it so they were like trying to get them to build it elsewhere and the town basically just expanded it across the street from them to try and drive them out because they didn't like like tattooed ratty rob zombie living in their town which is predominantly a very rich white town Makes he sense, stood out tracks. it was hilarious like you could literally drive up there and go to the whole foods in the area and he's just like rob zombie walking around an old folks home all right, I, I three men and a baby. The, the, oh, hold on, the God, only person finally that's get attached. The, cast? the only per, <laughs> I was the only about to person close out this show, but we have three <laughs> men and a baby to get to just briefly. Yeah, the only person that's been attached it's uh, Zac Efron. So uh, of course, that's, all right. So it's gonna be yeah. Zac Efron. It's gonna be Dave Franco, and it's gonna be Anthony Seth Mackie. Rogen. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, Seth you need you Seth need, Rogen yeah, in you, blackface. You need, <laughs> you need a POC, and they all I'm have the to black be gay dad. Too. <laughs> he still just talks like <laughs> Seth Rogen. Hey, he's the baby. Yeah. Oh, it's a new night at the museum. That's cool. Yeah. You blow my mind, Hans. <laughs> That's great. God, I'm so excited dude. for no, I'm kidding. all these movies and TV shows coming out on Disney Plus. Yeah. It's time right. for, for you to subscribe. Yeah. All right. All right. Look, that's been movies for this week. Check out Death Curse Comics, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. YouTube, everywhere. Spencer, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank and you uh, that's been our Rob Zombie retrospective. Thank you for listening.